It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Wow, what a panel. Ed Bott is here from ZDNet. Owen J.J. Stone from IQMZ.com. And Ant Pruitt from Tech Republic. We're going to talk about the Apple joining the four comma club. Universal basic income. Is it a good idea or just more BS from Silicon Valley? Speaking of which, blockchain seems to be going down and the Surface Go is up and up. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit. This Week in Tech, episode 678, recorded Sunday, August 5th, 2018. Popcorn, brown liquor. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Casper, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. You can save $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash twit and using the promo code twit at checkout. And by Stamps.com, buy and print real U.S. postage. The instant you need it, right from your desk. For our special offer, go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone, and enter Twit. And by LastPass, secure every password-protected entry point to your business. Join over 33,000 businesses and start managing and securing your company's passwords today. Learn more at LastPass.com slash Twit. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans, introducing Rate Shield Approval. If you're in the market to buy a home, Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. Learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash twit2. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we cover the week's tech news. I am so looking for. I say this every week. It sounds like a broken record, but I am. I'm so looking forward to this. My old friend Ed Bott is back. From Santa Fe, he's at the uh, ZDNet Ed Bot Report. Is that named after you, Ed? No, no, no. I just inherited it. Mm. There's actually been 30 Ed Bots. It's like Spencer the Cat, right? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Wouldn't that be funny? Maybe I should start recruiting people to take over yeah. from me. You're the next Ed Bot. I want to do that with me. I think, uh, in fact, I think it might have happened. They won't tell me, but I believe that this is... Uh, the fourth clone that's hosted the show uh, over the past uh, intervening decade. But I'm Orphan, not sure. Orphan White. Orphan <laughs> White. That's right. <laughs> that's right. There's 18 of us. Also here, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Oh, Doctor, you're on an orange background now, Oh, o and J.J. Stone. I didn't know you could do that. It's reddish, and that's I could change it. Well, I got the <laughs> Philips Hue lights. I'm a, oh. a, a grown man, master my domain. I don't have the pictures up right now, so you just got colors to deal with. How right do now. you oh, uh, represent represent my 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 first place, Philly, Philadelphia Phillies, Phillies? The Eagles yeah. won uh, last year in the Super Bowl. The right. Phillies going to win the World Series this year, right? If they won the World Series this year, I'd probably jump off a bridge. So let's hope they don't win the World Series this year. <laughs> That'd be too much. Let's just calm down. It'd be too Life much. Life can't be that good. Not all the time. <laughs> uh, also joining us right now, he's a Clemson fan, so we won't mention. But the color's good, right? That's the right color. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ant Pruitt. From, yes, I am. <laughs> how you doing, Ant, from Tech Republic? Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having me. I know Mr. O Doctor was, was quite ecstatic from Weapon X being a Hall of Famer from the Philadelphia Eagles, as well as a Clemson alum, Mr. Brian Dawkins. Yep. You guys Dawkins, talking sport ball again, right? Who's a sport <laughs> ball? There's technology in that. There's stats and mathematics and addition and new helmets and rules and aerodynamics, all kinds of yes. technological warfare going on in sports nowadays. Yeah, actually, that was a story that even those of us not in Philly uh, heard about because he dragged a bunch of uh, Eagles fans to the Hall of Fame with him, didn't he? Uh, the Hall of Fame always brings everybody out. You know, everybody comes out and supports. It's a fun night. Guys give speeches and people I cry. It. I love it. It's it's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. That's nice. Oh, and his his favorite player is uh, Ronnie Lott. Oh, nice. 49ers. That's your connection 49ers. out there. He, he gives it up to Ronnie. And, and the a, greatest a, safety a, of all time. A further connection, you gave my wife a Ronnie Lott jersey. Nothing but the best for Lisa. Nice. Nothing but the you, best. You know what I have? <laughs> I was so stupid. I bought a Colin Kaepernick jersey. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I, I don't dare wear it. 
It'll uh, be why, why can't you wear it? For you. I'm you afraid should. I get stoned. Ah! <sighs> I was a fan. You no, you know what? I remember because I remember he the year before. Uh, actually, it wasn't. It was the preseason before he got uh, moved up to take over the quarterback role of the Niners. Uh, I watched him in the preseason scramble and score a touchdown. I thought, that kid's good. And then, of course, he, he took is. us to the Super Bowl. I was very impressed. Uh, so I bought the jersey. I thought, this guy's a superstar. He's going to be a franchise quarterback. He's a superstar yeah. in his own way. I Just love him He still. sure is. I love He's Colin still a still. superstar. He still is. Even maybe though, maybe even more so. Yeah, in a way. He he sacrificed yeah. his career for his beliefs. So well, I guess he gave if, if, you, if, if, you're, if you're not going to wear a Sunday over here, I'll, I'll let the kid wear it. Really? You'd let Aaliyah wear a, a number seven Kaepernick? Uh, my buddy has a, a Eagles Kaepernick jersey with the number seven on it. He's a gangster. I don't feel like spending my money to make one, but it's pretty awesome. She it's would look, awesome. She would look like she was wearing a tent if she wore. Oh yeah, no, no jersey. doubt she's grown into it. She still wears my she still wears my dad's Dawkins jersey, and it's, and it's funny when she was a baby. Now now she starts to see her legs. So she'll grow into it. Don't worry about all that. Uh, let's get into technology before they skewer I us. I know. Sport ball. In ah. The comments. We, we had, quickly. Technologicalize me something. Say Apple. Something. Apple, Apple. Apple. Record there we quarter. Go. Trillion dollar company. The first to be uh, worth $1 trillion in the United States of America. Even, uh, you know, worth more. The, my, my favorite stat, that's the New York Times. You could click the start button on that. If you're watching the video, this is a really great infographic, animated infographic the New York Times did. My favorite, uh, you know, factoid from all of that is that Apple is now worth more than the entire United States media industry, all the TV, all the radio, throw in Disney, Comcast, throw them all in. They don't add up to $1 trillion. Does it mean anything at all to anybody? It's just a number. It's four commas. Who are you starting with? Ed Bot. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that's why I started with you, Ed. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, market capitalization is such a, uh, a distortion of, of everything these days. Uh, the, there's a handful of big companies that have basically having money funneled into them in ways that remind me very much of 1999 mm. and 2008. You think it's bubble uh, time? Well, I mean, who knows? You know, if, if I knew that, uh, I mean, I'd be a, I'd be a billionaire, yeah. but it sure, it sure reminds me of that time. And, and we already saw a little inkling of what can happen when things turn on a company with what happened to Facebook just oh, two weeks man. ago, losing $120 billion yeah. of their market cap in, in one day. I don't think uh, Apple is in any danger of having that happen to them because well, they so have let's, you know, let's momentum. Let's ask this question. Does, is Apple being worth a trillion and have this big bump in its stock price that important to Apple compared to Facebook losing 120 billion dollars in its market cap is it does market cap have it doesn't mean the company's got more money it means there's more out you know value in the shares that's all right yeah it's just value i don't think it's i look at it more as like monopoly money it doesn't really mean anything until you don't have any i guess though uh for morale purposes, it matters. Your employees who probably have stock options are paying attention to this, unfortunately. So uh, when it comes to tech and the stock market, it's such a scam because they don't evaluate technology the way they do other markets. It's not like oil and gas and things like that. It's just on how they feel when they want to make free money. You know, Facebook does what it's supposed to do, and then they tank Facebook. And thanks to Jiminy Christmas that losing $15 billion doesn't make Zuckerberg jump out of a window just shows you how much real money he actually has that he's like, okay, whatever. But he was doing the right thing, and the market doesn't reflect that because they want you to keep being corrupt and making free money on top of money on top of money instead of saying, hey, let's adjust and pivot and keep growing and have trust in our company and our brand. The, the stock market is such a scam it's ridiculous. And them being worth a trillion dollars, 
whoop de doo. They're cares? they're selling. Yeah. Uh, every time I look at one of the markets, it's in the global scale of things. They're losing shares to other phones, other devices, and other things. They personally can't yeah, get their own media content correct. Their music streaming price. is down. So, again, all the things I look at in general, I'm like, sure, keep fluffing up that number and giving somebody money until you rip everybody off. So, bubble or bust or whatever it is, them making a trillion dollars, cookies to them. Shame on me for not putting my $100 in back in 1996. All That's right, all let's I play a game. You probably already know the answer to this, all of you, because you covered this. But number one uh, phone manufacturer uh, this quarter, who sold the most phones this quarter? Was it Apple? Samsung. My way. Samsung. Huawei, number two. There it is, yeah. number two. Number yeah. two. It's Apple, it's number three. So you could talk about Apple's stock price, which easily beats Samsung's uh, market value and, and Huawei's market value. But if what you're talking about is how many phones you sold. You, unit pricing. Yeah, that's true. Apple's phones cost a little more, don't they? Not much more, more than the Samsung. Probably a lot more than Not the Not that Huawei's. much more than Samsung. Yeah. Um, and it's, again, Apple's, Apple does everything. and Everything in Apple matters on how you feel. They right. make you feel like you have a gold laptop in your lap. You know it's a piece of crap without a touchscreen or SD card reader, and they tell you it's a consumer <laughs> pro. Why you got me ranting about Apple Is right this going to be the anti-Apple show? Does. No, they stop make, it. No, it's, it's, I'm always anti-Apple. I'm, I'm so switched. I only have – I got my phone <laughs> left, and I got this uh, Mac Mini left. And I'm, I'm, I'm slowly fading getting away? the drugs out of my system. Really? Trying to get off the crack cocaine and heroin, Uncle Lee. It was hard, though. And, and Ed Bott's always been a Windows guy, scared. right? Ed, you, Ed, you got – you know, you like yeah, it. Yeah, I mean – I, you know, I, I try to be ecumenical about these things. Uh, you know, one thing that I thought of, though, first of all, in your ranking of, of the companies, that's by unit sales. Right. If you look at profit, oh, yeah. the, the numbers are very different. Uh, Apple's margins are insane, and they're capturing, right. you know, what is it, 80, 90 percent of all the profit in the entire smartphone market. But, you know, thinking back on the, the whole trillion dollar valuation, it reminds me of Amazon's journey. You know, Amazon is second largest company or third. They're right. They're right up there. Yeah, all of these and, companies are close to a trillion. Google, Amazon, Microsoft, right. probably will but, all hit a trillion at some point. But for years, Amazon uh, would, you know, they'd report insane, in, in, in big increases in revenue and no profit. Uh, you know, one half of one half percent or even a tiny loss. They'd always manage their expenditures. So every bit of profit that they were making, they were plowing back into the business. And now, just in the last two years or so, you're starting to see all of that stuff pay off for them. And that, to me, is more of the model of what to look for in a successful company. You know, Amazon was saying, Screw the quarterly results. Screw the the uh, analysts who say you need to you know you need to be paying a dividend or you need to be uh, showing you know five percent or ten percent profit each quarter. They were plowing it back into the business and and the funny thing is that where they are making all of that money now is on uh, Amazon web service Amazon web services AWS. That's where. They, you know, while everyone was looking at Amazon, the the big e-commerce site, they were stealthily building this juggernaut of a business that is in turn running the rest of the internet. If you if you buy Amazon stock, you're buying you're betting on Jeff Bezos, right? You're saying I don't I don't know what their business is, <laughs> or what their business will be. But I think that that big wallet that Jeff Bezos is carrying around will be put to good use. He looks like he's going to get in the pharmacy business. He acquired PillPack. Uh, God knows what drone plans he has. Uh, he certainly looks like he's getting in the position. He wants to do health care. He's gotten together with J.P. Morgan and uh, Berkshire Hathaway to do something that looks like it's Amazon health care for employees. But obviously, if <laughs> the next step is, you know... We might have single payer in the United States brought to you by Amazon.com. <laughs> uh, wow. instead, of, instead of healthcare by Amazon, maybe they should get like a 20 minute bathroom break instead of having <laughs> to run all the way across a factory and take two minutes in the bathroom and not make it back in time and get punished yeah. for their 15 minute break. It's 
the, the working conditions there, I have a lot of friends. So there's a local hub around here. And so many of my friends cycle in and out. So I, you know, it, it drives all right, me let me play the all let me play the uh, the evil capitalist for a moment, and 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 you can you can uh, you could shoot at me, oh doctor. They take the job. If you don't like the job, quit. Get a different job. So they do take mm. the job, right? It's and more than a minimum quit. wage. It's and legal. It's more, it, it's more than minimum wage, and it is legal. But it's also for a company that is um, automated and. So down to the wire. And here's the bottom line. When that man sits on TV and the way he talks about his employees versus the way they treat employees, that's what I have a problem with. If you want to be a slumlord, go ahead and be a slumlord. But don't tell me that I'm living in a luxury apartment in the sky. And yes, those people can quit. And most of those people do quit because they can't handle it. But a lot of people need a job. There's only so many jobs per area. And that yeah. place has a farm system for work. So, yes, you're absolutely right. They have the right to quit. They can get their little 10, 50 an hour. They'll get their four hours a night or 12 hours or 60 hours or whatever it is. But again, when you're talking about health care and when you sit on TV and tell me how your working conditions are great. And I'm telling you that a person on the floor putting stuff in your box gets a 15 minute break. And if they had to go to the bathroom, by the time they get all the way over to the bathrooms, it's already eight minutes. And they've got to be back in those 15 minutes or they get ridden up and get ridden up three times. You're out. And that's just for going to the bathroom, let alone your half hour lunch break. So the work conditions there aren't spectacular if you're on the ground. I got another buddy who does a uh, website work for them. He works from home. He's getting paid a mint living in Seattle, Washington. And he's balling out of control, typing away yeah. on his computer. But that's the way so, it should be. He has a high, he has a high level of skills. He, he he's, he's doing something that is uh, difficult and a rare job. Anybody can be a warehouse worker. They're getting paid commensurate to their value to the company. Again, they're, they're, I understand. Paid, I'm being the evil getting, capitalist. Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah. I feel like I'm not yelling at you. I'm saying you're right. They're getting paid for w what they're doing. I'm just saying that there needs to be more humanity in those lower end jobs where the bulk and the back and the workforce uh, is is the lifeblood of your is, business. Is Especially it, when though, you're going to be oh, turning into robots. Is it Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, uh, Tim Cooks? Is it their responsibility to look at Google now is getting a lot of heat. Apparently, this is a rumor, they're preparing a censored version of Google search for China, the authoritarian regime that Sergey Brin pulled out of uh, when they when China started to assert its authoritarianism. But apparently they want to go back in. Google employees are very upset. Is it, is it the responsibility of these CEOs to be human or is it re their responsibility to be profitable? Isn't that their it's job? It's a balance. It's a yeah. balance in how they should do things. And again, it's how you talk. When you sit there and tell me, I'm going to say it again. When you're on national TV talking about those people in the warehouse and you talk about all the great things they have Wait going minute, on. You and think you it'd be okay if Jeff Bezos was the evil genius rubbing his hands in glee? If he were Scrooge and McDuck saying, I'm rich, I'm the richest man in the world, screw those employees. Then it would be okay? At least it'd be honest. I mean, I'm not saying it'd be okay. It's not okay exactly. the way it is now. And and bringing up and bringing up Facebook. Facebook doesn't sell anything. They don't have minions in warehouses, uh, uh, hitting the like button. No, we're the minions. For you. No, when it comes to so, Facebook, yeah. we're the minions. At least at least Bezos built a customer centric company. Bezos could make the argument. No, we focus on making the customer happy, and the employees work for us, and that's their job. Well, okay, let's back up just a little bit though, and let's go back to Apple because Apple has partly the same problem. Exactly the, the stores, same problem. The, right? the Apple stores, the employees in the Apple stores are very much in the same boat. And, you know, you, what you've got is, is basically a situation in this country where there's two kinds of workers. Those who have skills are treated like gods and those who are working with their bodies are treated like uh, replaceable cogs that get discarded as soon as they break or show any signs of not wanting to be part of the machine. I would love to see the, the leaders of one of these companies show some moral leadership and, uh, and actually say, you know, we're going to go beyond what we're required to do uh, you know, I think that we, we really need that. We really need someone to set 
a moral example in terms of the way that they treat workers. Because right now, if you listen to your average stock market analyst or your average corporate executive when they're talking about an earnings call, they treat any increase in wages or any increase in benefits to employees as something bad and something mm-hmm. to be uh, and and something to be avoided. So laying off workers is good. Cutting salaries is good. Uh, cutting expenses for workers is good. And I don't know. That just seems wrong in a, in a country where some where a huge portion of the workforce is capable of using their bodies, capable of of doing good work, but only able to earn a subsistence wage out of that. You said something to start there. You, you talked about having a skill versus working with your body. And I think that's part of the problem right there is we don't necessarily look at the people that are running the retail stores as having a skill. They're selling the product. Um, At the same time, you could go to corporate sales and be a rainmaker and make a gazillion dollars. Sales is sales and sales is a skill. But for whatever reason, we have our own little perception of, okay, you're just selling the the iPad inside of the store. You know, you're not really skilled. But the second you move you out to, to sell ads for Apple or what have you, you know, then that's a skill. You know, and, and we, I, we have to fix that. You and I, Ant, have a little dog in this hunt. You will at some point. Oh, doctor, we have kids who are yeah. entering a workplace that is different from the workplace we entered and who may be faced with some very difficult choices. Uh, the, I feel terrible for millennials, even those coming out of college uh, with skills, because the jobs are disappearing. Now, this bring, I, I set you guys up. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> because this brings up something. That is, I think, going to rapidly be a conversation. Universal basic income. And I want to take a little break, but I want to talk about uh, what one, what Silicon Valley seems to like as a solution. And a guy who's running for president who says this is the solution. Uh, In Canada, there's been some experiments that were recently abandoned uh, in UBI. I'm curious what you guys think about it because I myself don't know what to think about it. The idea, though, a fundamental idea is jobs are disappearing. The robots are coming. They're taking over. We better start thinking about what we're going to do about real people who can't work, even though unemployment is at a historic high, right? Unemployment is very low right now. Yeah, it's going uh, down. It depends on whose numbers. depends on whose numbers you check with. Yes. Yeah. And Obama it, it, was in office. Trump kept saying, I don't believe the numbers. So I don't know if I believe the numbers currently. <laughs> now I don't that's all I'm saying. Numbers. Currently, I don't know if I yeah. believe the numbers. Well, that sounds like a political game. I'm just curious. Uh, I mean, some of those numbers are people who are underemployed. Some of those people have not have stopped looking for work, so they're not counted as unemployed. Nevertheless, uh, it doesn't look like there's a crisis at this point, but maybe one's coming. And some people are worried about that and have a plan which seems maybe to be voodoo economics. I don't know. I want to get your guys' opinion. So I'm going to give you a minute Betray to think. Put my apron on. Are you cooking? I want to know what Odoc is cooking. We're going to take cooking. <laughs> we're going to take a break, and then the battle royale will begin. Cage match on <laughs> in just in just a moment. Capitalist cage match. The capitalist cage match. You bunch of commies. You bunch of commies. <laughs> uh, we got Edbot here. I like to bait Edbot because Edbot and I basically are exactly the same politically. But I like to bait you. He is great. Edbot report ZDNet. Old friend, too. It's great to have you on the show. Oh, Doctor, who I dearly love. He's uh, ready to go off at any moment. Be careful. Any <laughs> moment. Anything could set him off. Oh, and JJ Stone. <laughs> IQMC.com. <laughs> and, and, you know, the Zen master of the bunch here, Mr. Ant Pruitt. Always calm. Always reasonable. Yes, always thoughtful. Uh- I will say this. When I saw that I was going to be on with these gentlemen, I've never been on with Mr. Bot or uh, Mr. JJ there or JJ Stone. And watching his previous appearances on here, I wanted to be prepared. So as soon as that rant comes up, 
<laughs> he's got a bucket, and he's and, he, and popcorn is in the bucket. All right, got the popcorn smart ready, man. I know it's going to be a show. Get I the, can't wait. Get for that the round. popcorn ready, kids. <laughs> I, I need I need popcorn. <laughs> I love Just it that Ant's, over. Ant's done some oppo research on you, Owen. He knows what's coming. <laughs> I love it, 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 it does happen. It does happen. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by sleep. Oh, man. You know, the older I get, the more I appreciate sleep and the more I appreciate my Casper <sighs> mattress. Isn't that a great moment? Now, tell me the truth. It's been a long day. You're tired. You've been working hard. The kids are driving you crazy. The job is nuts. Traffic was terrible. That moment when you get in bed, you slide under the sheets. It's so magical. It's so great. If you have a great mattress, the worst thing in the world, and I know because we were on vacation, and the mat, it was you get in bed, it's awful. It's a terrible mattress. And you go, what? I, this is my one refuge from life, and I'm sleeping on this? No, you need a Casper. In fact, I think I'm going to send a Casper to that, that place we rented at Tahoe. They need a Casper. Casper is an online... Let me explain who they are. They're an online retailer, premium mattresses. That, that might scare you. Well, I'm not going to buy a mattress online. i got to lie on it. Well, honestly... This is, this is where Casper came from. These guys realized that in the mattress business, there was a huge problem, which is the middleman, the mattress store. They double the price of that mattress. You pay a huge premium for the simple privilege of going in there and lying on a mattress in broad daylight with the salesperson staring at you for three minutes. You think that helps you decide... Maybe, but you're paying a big price for it. So Casper said, look, we could take that out of the equation. Revolutionize the mattress industry by cutting the cost of dealing with resellers and showrooms and then passing that on to you. They had, a, But how do we do that? Well, this is how they do that with the 100-day guarantee. And when you get a Casper mattress, you have 100 nights to sleep on it. You don't have to lie down in a showroom. And if for any reason you don't like it, they'll come, they'll take it, and they'll pay you back every penny, no cost. So that's a great deal. And by the way, free shipping and returns, not only in the U.S., but Canada and the U.K. too. So the original Casper mattress is the one we have. Combines multiple supportive memory foams for a sleep surface that's it's, it's, uh, it's uncanny. Just the right sink. So when you get in bed after that tough day, you go, ah, oh, and you just, ah. Oh. But you don't want to keep sinking. You want some... Some backbone. So it's got just the right bounce. Just the firm... It's, it's the strangest combination of comfort and firmness it's breathable you sleep cool on these hot summer nights that's huge and and we do know that by the way you will sleep better if you can regulate your temperature through the night the casper mattress it smells good it's breathable it's comfortable and you could try it online buy it online and try it completely risk-free in your home this is the mattress you want there's actually now more than the original casper they've they've expanded I just want you to go to Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R dot com slash twit. When you use the offer code twit, you can save $50 on select mattresses. And you're going to find the best night's sleep you've ever had. And that's, we know, more and more important. I'm telling you, as life goes on, you will realize there's probably only a handful of things that really matter. One of them is a great night's sleep on a Casper mattress. Terms and conditions apply. Casper dot com slash twit. Use the promo code twit. For fifty dollars off on select mattresses, my dad, who's eighty-five, happy birthday, daddy! Turned eighty-five on the thirtieth. Is all over. I keep getting email from my dad for this guy, Andrew Yang. Uh, Yang is, he says, running for president. He doesn't have a chance in the world, but uh, you know, dad liked Bernie Sanders too. He's the author of a book called "The War on Normal People." I think this ties right into what we we're talking about: the truth about America's disappearing jobs. And why universal basic income is our future. And I'm trying to come up with arguments. Because I'm going to see Dad in a couple of, couple of weeks. Dad, this guy, universal basic income, it's a non-starter. Is this, and by the way, Silicon Valley loves this solution. It lets them off the hook. Sure, we can make a robots, we can take all the jobs. Because you guys, Yang says, uh, we're going to pay everybody between the age, ages of 18 and 65 $1,000 a month, $12,000 a year. He also believes in single-payer health care. 
I don't know how he's going to pay for this. I don't know if he knows how he's going to pay for this. Is this, Ed, is this the solution that we're looking for? Uh, well, I actually have a local angle that I can uh, yes. bring on to this. Um, I'm, you may not know this, but my hometown is Stockton, California. Ah. Uh, that's that's where I grew up. Love and Stockton. the the mayor Fat of City. Stockton, the Fat City, the mayor and and ground zero of the housing bubble 10 years ago. Oh, also, uh, uh, and the mayor of Stockton is a wonderful, very smart man named Michael Tubbs. And Michael Tubbs is uh, I think he's probably 28 or 29 years old now. And he's the mayor of the city. My father. 40 years ago was the mayor of Stockton. So there's a, you know, this big connection here. At any rate, Michael Tubbs uh, is doing a small controlled experiment with universal basic income in Stockton, California. I haven't kept up on it lately, but as of about six months ago, that was uh, that was happening. And I'm so, you know, there are some experiments going on in this country and it does seem like a way to eliminate at least part of the basic you know the, the the sort of core baseline problem which is at least give people a chance to get get to a subsistence level yeah nobody instead argues of, instead that of it's being a, homeless it's a living wage five hundred dollars a month is definitely not even a thousand a month not not be but it gets you out of deep poverty and I, you know one thing i i and it I, means you don't and it means that you probably don't have to live on the street right. if, if something happens to you. Right. And the one argument against it, which I don't buy, is, oh, people are lazy. They'll say, hey, thank you, and they'll never work again. And nobody's going to do that. And, well, maybe a handful will. Most people, the, the premise really is, if you have this kind of uh, safety net, then you'll take more chances. You'll work harder. You'll try, you know, you, you might do take a job that would be a little more risky and do better as a result. That's the argument. Um, they they were doing it in Ontario. They were doing it in Canada in Hamilton, Brantford, Brant County, Lindsay, and Thunder Bay. And the new government in Ontario, Rob Ford's brother, just dumped it completely. Just what? That's it. Uh, in fact, you say this page was published under a previous government <laughs> and is and is now available for archival and research purposes. In other words, uh, it's over. So we don't know what the results are, but but I'm noticing a lot of howls of pain from people who said this was a this was a success. This was going to do well. What do you, Owen? You got an opinion on UBI? Um, <laughs> get the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's not a reliable thing. You know, we have welfare subsidized housing. People can barely afford to keep themselves afloat on that. And again, I know how statistics work, but in the real world, there's so many people that aren't counted, that aren't working, that are living with family members and, and struggling with either jobs. So telling me you're going to give somebody $1,000 a month when you don't do anything about inflation, first of all, we don't have any money. You're telling me you don't have Social Security. All these other issues that we got, you're just going to start giving out free money to everybody? No. And of course, San Francisco says they want to do that. At the same time, I really could care less because... We're going to run out of water before robots start taking jobs. <laughs> is, there, is there going to be a... Oh, no. When my, pipe, when my pipes break, is there going to be an android that comes in here and fixes my pipes? No. We need plumbers, okay? We need <laughs> welders. We need people that build things. Like, the things when they say, oh, the robots are taking over. You know what it is? It's a little flat Roomba that moves shelves in a <laughs> it warehouse. It ain't taking over. <laughs> it's, it's not taking over. So, I mean... But again, by the time you see the movie, yeah, but really, honestly, how Time long before the world. even those Amazon jobs go away? That's what I'm saying. I, I'm like, pay the people anymore. now, raise the wages, stop doing what Walmart and Amazon does. We're like, look, you can get 29 and a half hours so that you're still not a full time employee, so you can go get welfare from the government and let the government subsidize your pay so I don't have yeah. to. I think that's, I think you nailed it. That job. That's exactly why. Silicon Valley likes UBI. A, it lets them off the hook. We can do whatever we want. B, oh, good. We'll, we'll make sure everybody's a contract employee because they're getting the money from the government. And yeah. uh, and then we don't have to pay benefits. That's brilliant. And, ag and, and again, we're going to run out of money. I know that this is the world we just print money. But China one day is just going to be like, you know what? Just shut the U.S. down. And they're going to hit the button 
put in code elemental P and the show's over. My TV's done. I can't get no cell reception. Cause if you don't think they got a kill switch and everything they ship over on these boats, you're out of your mammy jammy mind. <laughs> we owe them so much money already. So I don't know how this is going to work. All right. Your turn, your turn, Aunt Pruitt. Have you thought about this at all, UBI? I'm not well versed in it. Um, haven't really looked into it. But the first thing to come to my mind was we, we get this stuff rolling the prices of just keeping the lights on in the house will eventually start to go up. Right. And I'm sure that universal benefit is not going to go up because the price just to keep the lights on in the house is going to go up. Not necessarily saying um, that everybody can afford air conditioning or things like that, but just the necessities of light and water. Yeah. Um, yeah. All of that's going to rise eventually. It goes up every single year. There's also the fear that a government that's paying a UBI, universal basic income, would just then cut the rest of the entitlements. UBI, it's estimated, would cost between one and a half and two trillion dollars a year. Mm. Well, uh, and the no, enti no. entire entitlement budget in the U.S. Uh, is, I think, one trillion. So this is a big chunk of change. They're going to have to go somewhere. Yang says, and this scares me too. Oh, you can pay it with a value-added tax. Charge tax on a national tax on everything on production yeah. and uh that scares me as well although we're we're i think one of the last uh, developed nations not to have a valued added tax right so here's the thing though the you can't talk about something like this in isolation it has to be part of a comprehensive economic plan yeah. a vision for yeah. what you want to do with the populace and, it, you know, if you look at the developed world right now, uh, you're finding a lot of resistance to anything that smacks of socialism like this. And, you know, so what you wind up with is piecemeal solutions like this. A universal basic income by itself, first of all, it doesn't have to cost a trillion dollars. You have phase outs for it, the same right. way that we have phase outs for all sorts of benefits that are there Me in the means tax testing, code. income testing. Yeah, I mean, or or at least when, once you re, you know once you reach a certain level, then your basic income starts dropping at fifty percent right. and uh, per dollar that you earn until it reaches a certain level, so that you don't have people, uh, you know, so that you don't have Rupert Murdoch collecting a thousand dollars a month in in UBI, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, you know, and 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 so you know, basically, what you have is people who are in the you know, you probably have about 50% of the population that is getting some sort of assistance. And that's the same way that the Affordable Care Act right. works. Right. So, you know, you know, and or it used to work. Yeah. Well, in, in, in some respects, in most respects, it still does because the law, of, the law was never repealed and the right. courts have upheld most most portions of it. But the but that's a good that's a good example of a program that had to be put together had to be cobbled together in a way with a whole bunch of provisions that didn't make sense. And as a result, you have something that that for political reasons doesn't work as well as it should. And I'm afraid that when you start talking about economic programs that benefit the entire populace and you and you try to build them one brick at a time and you argue over each brick, you're going to wind up with something that is not very solid, not very stable, not very sensible. And, you know, that's just kind of the way this country works these days. Yeah. I, yeah. I could I, I just want to say something so people don't yell at me for always being a Debbie Downer. I could literally fix uh, America's problems with two things. Um, the first thing is cut the defense budget 90 percent for two years. And you could even do a year on a year off. Just cut it 90 percent. Just have enough money to pay everyone in our armed forces for that year. But all the rest of that money, put it into a hydro system with the water. Like if you looked at Portland. They're going in their tunnels and they're putting in hydroelectricity in the water. So when you get water coming to your house, which it pumps through the township anyway, every 10 feet or 100 yards, whatever it is, they got the little ball just rolling around and it produces electricity. Soon everybody's going to have free electricity. If somebody who always says as a president, we're going to do infrastructure, actually did infrastructure, put all that defense money into building a hydro system for water. Of course, the land city electric wouldn't like it, but the cost of just electricity would come down, which would help other costs of living. And if you did that every like 10 years, say, hey, we're going to actually fix this. We're going to actually fix that. We'd be good. 
but we spend money on jets that are invisible and nobody can see them <laughs> and we don't use yeah. them for anything because we don't have jet fighter battles anymore and we're building tanks that no one uses tanks anymore and we spent all this money wasted but if we just went and did a hydro system with the water yeah. oh the things that we could do if we yeah. actually did something with our infrastructure but America, I digress. It's the real world, though, you know, and, and we can imagine a perfect world, but, uh, you know, there's humans in it, and that's gruesome yeah. for everybody. <laughs> M money. <laughs> money and humans. Bad mix. Uh, yeah. I think about those, those small towns in South Carolina that I grew up in and places like um, rural Louisiana. You know, how, how are those people, those residents affected by getting $1,000 a month and still struggling down there and let alone dealing with things like natural disasters and you know or, or, what is that going to do for them and is are they going to get any other assistance when stuff like that is going to happen right do you know, food stamps and uh, medicare go away because uh, the cost of living keeps it? going up yeah I mean, so, there's a lot of unanswered questions. I think it's interesting. I mean, Mark Andreessen very famously said, well, the, you don't have to worry about robots taking your job because the cost of goods will go down so much that it effectively li life will be free. I think he likes uh, universal basic income as well. And so it's the opposite. Everything will get cheaper and you'll have life more leisure time. Never, no matter what you do in this world, a Star Trek sounds great. Unless aliens come and we got to bond together, nothing will ever be free. Even from the beginning of time when there was no currency, there was a barter ship. You right. got to put in something for something. Nothing yeah. is free. And uh, <laughs> no, no, nothing's free. All right. I'll you tell you no something free. that's free. You got your Amazon Echo ready? This is actually uh, nice. it's an ad for an insurance company called Hippo. Uh, they've created a new away mode. Protect your home. Oh. With with the new awkward a uh, Amazon Echo skill, they've got writers from Saturday Night Live and other places writing arguments that will come out of your Echo when you're not <laughs> home, and go on and on. This one, uh, I'll play a little bit. This is uh, this is a mom walking her daughter through assembling a dresser <laughs> over the phone. It goes on for sixty eight minutes. Cylinders but into the hole. No, wait. Yeah, you put the cylinders into the holes. You see them? This is coming out of your Echo. Good. When the burglars are at the door. How about this one? Uh, book club meeting where everything but the book is discussed. Favorite books we've read. I like that it was like a scary diary. <laughs> Super neat. Did you see the movie? Oh, yes. No. Nope. Glenn and I go <laughs> this, to... This is a good one. A couple is fighting Could while... the TV and the chairs are mine, plus the little table. Of course. Oh, and Roger's coming with me, too. What? What? You don't even you don't even take care of him anymore. I adopted him. I took him to get shots. I paid for the vet fees. He's mine. I'm turning but this. If I leave him with you, you'll never scoop his litter. It'll be a health hazard now, for the both of you. If I'm a burglar, I'm gonna actually stand outside and listen. I wanna <laughs> well, wanna I hear what's I gonna happen I with Roger. I hope I don't live next to the people who turn <laughs> that damn thing turn it all the way up when they go when they go they go away and i'm there with the you know with the paper thin walls have to listen to their didn't skills. you know that when you do, did you ever do this i did this we'd leave the lights on and the tv going when we left so that the burglar would think somebody's home right sure. yeah it's kind of like that. Here's one uh, passionate oh, argument over the rules of a complicated board game. How many times has this happened? I'm, the rule book. I'm already looking. The other rule book. Not this one? The rule. That, that's the rules reference. Right. The rule. No, it's in the learn to play guide. But this goes on the quick for 47 you, minutes. The tech reference? I know the rule. I'm not a newbie. <laughs> Nobody's saying right. you're a newbie. No, you're saying it without actually saying it. <laughs> these, these are, this is some of the worst... Acting. The acting's terrible. Like, I, I agree with you. That. They need. They, they're better off sending like a recording truck to Colorado <laughs> and follow stoners around. That's actually for two a better idea. Yeah, and get some real conversation. Like, man, did get you know, Elon like, Musk and his like get Elon moon? Musk like, and his brother in the hot tub. Just record a couple of hours of that, and that would something. Work. Yeah, that would be better. Yeah, that 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 was uh that was terrible. They got writers, good writers. SNL from uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. UCB. Unfortunately, they need better actors. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's like TV, your TV yeah. on. It, it is like that. I just, you know, I have a dog. 
<laughs> I, <laughs> leave, I leave my TV on. Well, actually, it's not my television. I just leave my computer running with uh, like Netflix or something. That's good. Going like that. It's like that. But I don't necessarily do that for uh, security. I do that just to keep the dogs quiet. <laughs> Yeah, but, they like that yeah. white noise. That's yeah, about it. You can also just you can all just run Twit TV. They're running twenty four seven. Just run us. We sound shows. like real people. There you go. Yeah, we sound sort like of. real people. Here's one of them. Two average guys brainstorming their next podcast. What else is interesting? <laughs> what, dude? Okay, so you know how much I love yeah. ketchup, right? Uh, for sure. Remember that when you like drank the entire bottle? Which time? <laughs> <laughs> You're a maniac. True that. Okay. So this guy loves ketchup. All right, all right. All right, all right. I just I just had to, I just had to mention it. <laughs> oh, Owen, Owen, Owen. Uh, oh, that was that like that hurt that hurts me. It hurts. It hurts. It was Listen so so bad. Ugh. Leo, Dude. you'll appreciate you, you'll appreciate this. Uh, my wife Judy and I have a we, you know, every married couple has secret signals, little yeah. little yeah. things that you yeah. you know, it's the yeah. thing that you say. Yeah. So if if one of us is telling a story that we've told before or going on a little too long with the story, we have permission. The way you the way you shut that down is you say, "Wow, honey, that's a great story. Why don't you save it for your podcast?" <laughs> 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 yeah, but see, that wouldn't work on me because I have a lot of stories I repeat over and over again on my podcast. So, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need something that says, "Oh, honey, why don't you save that when you're not on a podcast?" <laughs> that that would maybe work a little bit better. All right, let's take a break. Can we get anybody upset about Facebook? How's Facebook doing these days? Oh hell yes! Oh hell yes! We'll talk about Facebook and more. We didn't really go on and on about Apple and, you know, how many iPhones they'd sold and all that stuff. And I guess they're horrible new MacBook Pros. I love them. Did you, you get like one? your oven? You got an it's easy bake oven? It's not an oven. So, you got an easy bake oven? Yeah. Boy, you know, this is an example of how one YouTuber can really ruin it. Uh, for a company, a tr you could be a trillion dollar company, but Dave to D says, "Oh, it's hot. I'm going to put it in the freezer. Look how much cooler it is." And the world, even my trainer at the gym, said, "I hear those MacBooks are really hot. I don't want one." I wonder how much that's going to impact Apple. Apple, uh, by hot. the you know, last week said, "Oh no, no, that we they're, sorry, there's a little uh, we left out something called a digital key." I installed it immediately. It fixed all the problems. It's a it's a great laptop. I love it, and I did not like, like the 2016 or 2017s at all. You got the you one with the, the i9. I got the i9. It's, it's not hot. The traps are hot though. Well, it's it hot if it's working, but that's how it should be. Look at this you, thing Aunt Pruitt's got over his right shoulder. That thing has got air cooling, water cooling, nitrogen cooling. Because she's it's, isn't if, she? it, but yes, but when it works, it's going to get hot, right? That's why you have all that cooling. And Do you have your little transformer P2. cube? What, what, what is that thing up there? That's a P2. A P Pentium 2? Yeah. What do you have just sitting on the top? It's not going to help you on top of the machine. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Not gonna, that's not going to help you in, in 2018. <laughs> remember, though? You remember those P2s? It was like a slot. It wasn't. Big slot. It was yeah, like. That's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's a slot. Yeah. Look at the size of that thing. Uh, no, you, I like you, it. I like I like having six cores. It's uh, It's very responsive. I'm actually very happy. And I hated the keyboards, but they put that little silicone dome, and it's just a slight difference, but it's. It's just enough so I can live with the keyboard. I'm not thrilled with it. But, oh, I love the speed of that thing. Battery life's really good, too. This Intel's speed step's doing the right thing. It slows it way down when it's not working, but it gives me plenty of horsepower when it is. I feel like it's a it's a nice thing. Did you get your little the little little transformer box to go along with it? Yeah, the eGPU. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's I'm going to tote that around with my portable <laughs> laptop. Let me just, let me just tote, hey. Hey, Ant, why don't you just strap your computer to your back and take it with your laptop everywhere you go That's so right. you can get that hey, max performance, it. get that Endure Cool <laughs> backpack on. Like, I mean, come on. The only thing that this laptop has is 32 gigs of RAM. Thanks for coming in to the 21st century, Apple. And secondly, you are king of touchscreens. These things cost $4 billion, and I still can't no touch. touch 
I it's got a touch it. bar. You got a, you got, who wants a bar? I want the screen. I'm hungry, Uncle Leo. The bar ain't feed me. I need the whole restaurant. Hey, I got to say one it. thing. You put this next to the Mac Pro. Here's the popcorn. It's out. Go, go, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I'm saying you, you, the thing you can't roll with your head. Why, you got a laptop. Why do I need this box? And what am I going to do with it? You can't run a little suit. What are you doing with that? Why? And you and I know you got money. Yeah, you rock a vibe, baby. That thing it's just, it looks like a little. Oh, so it like looks great again. next to the Mac Pro. It's exactly you know, the same our, size. And, and I can't wait till you go on vacation. Make sure you take that with you. Pack it and and feel the pain of lumbering that thing around when you go coast to coast, Key West to Key Largo. Go ahead with your little you hot do, <laughs> pancake making MacBook Pro. Go ahead, take. You do have to wonder four, what exactly Apple dollars. was thinking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't make this. This is black magic. They just sell it. But uh, but I can't get an SD card slot though. No, you don't need that. <laughs> you need you need an eGPU. Uh, uh, but, but Mr. Laporte, even when I saw you on the screensavers with that thing. It didn't even help with like running motion. No, it still didn't seem like it was offloading any any uh, of the resources to there it. There right? seems to be um, a uh, setting that each app has to have that says use the eGPU, and that is another issue. I found a script that we were able to apply that does then get the eGPU. You know, it's interesting because. How much did you pay for this thing, Leo? <laughs> Too much. Yeah, yeah. This, How this much thing, money did you this give away? This thing that you have to Google some kind of script that will actually make it do the thing that it's supposed to do for the $6,000 or whatever you spent for it. Or <laughs> you know, hey, guess what? Uncle Leo, you know what the best thing about that little box is? What? You had the capability and the power to put some stamps on it at your business and send it back to Apple. Oh, you're Stamp right. Thanks to stamps.com, our sponsor today. <laughs> They're helping me pay for the eGPU. We're on the monthly installments. Uh, Stamp <laughs> <laughs> I got it on the installment plan. Uh, <laughs> stamps.com is the way, the way to save a trip to the post office. If you are, if you use the postal service, and who doesn't, right? Whether it's sending out brochures or invoices, or maybe you sell stuff on Amazon or Etsy or eBay, you you know you're you're mailing stuff. Don't go to the post office. Do everything you could do at the post office, at, at your desk. I mean, I still go to the post office just to say hi because I like the mailman. But you can do, you can buy and print your own real U.S. postage from your computer and your printer with stamps.com. It doesn't stop there. You get a USB scale, so you always have exactly the right postage. It will suggest ways to save money on postage. It fills out the forms if you're sending internationally or you're sending certified. It, it even pulls in the addresses from your address book, prints your own return address automatically, plus a company logo or an imp an image if you want. You can print real stamps. You can print on an envelope. You can print a label of any kind. It'll even send out the email and all of that stuff. It's so it's click, print, and mail, and you're done, and it just couldn't be easier. We're such huge fans of stamps.com. Been using them for years, and we've got a very, very nice deal if you'd like to find out what stamps.com can do for you. Go to stamps.com. That's the website. Stamps.com. And use Twit for the special offer. It includes... $55 in free postage. It includes a digital scale. Use a four-week trial. Go to stamps.com. Before you do anything else, up in the right-hand corner, you'll see a microphone, radio microphone. Click that, enter to it, and get this amazing offer. I know you've heard me talk about it. you probably heard friends talk about it. It is now time. It is now time for you to get stamps.com. Just don't forget to use the offer code TWIT for a really excellent uh, offer. Uh, thank you, Owen JJ Stone, for that marvelous segue. Hey, you could all you could always return <laughs> Apple products. Do they get too hot? Put a stamp on it. Got to put a stamp on it. I don't know. Maybe I drank the Kool Aid. You know me. I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not uh, an Apple fanboy. It's, it's part of your job. I understand. And the, the, there's a thing called tax write offs. And I mean, when I yell at you about spending this money, I understand. 
Uh, I'm, I'm looking at, again, I always repeat this to you, and if one day we're going to set it up with the Owen Exchange Program, I should where just you send spend you all money stuff, yeah. on ridiculous things. Yeah. That I, oh, see, like somebody sent me one of these. What's that? Why um, put me on that list? <laughs> uh, okay, you got a you Blackberry, you oh, lucky you, dog. You gotta, Look at that. You get to the back. And so uh, so this this right here, first from Blackberry, this is that uh, LG G7 ThinQ. This is a sexy phone. It's an iPhone wanna be iPhone X. Yeah. But it guess does what? It's have got a, notch? a fingerprint reader in the back. It does have a notch, but it's got a fingerprint reader in the back. It's got Google AI. So when I put it up to stuff, it tells me what it is, where it goes. I, I mean, like, like you know, doing innovative things like unlike Apple does. And this That's this is not a, innovative, sir. That is a no, this, Blackberry. <laughs> this do you, do you know do you do you know what this is? This is <laughs> The suffrage of my child for the next week. So they sent it to me to, to do. You're like, going to make your out. kid review I, the new BlackBerry. I I am going to stick this with her for a, a week, maybe ten days, and see if she can survive. See if like it, it survives. I want to know how she feels inside after having this in her hand. Having it, she's never had a physical keyboard. She doesn't even know. She she, she looked at this. She said, "What's right. that?" So. Giving this to her and finding out what she does with it, how she can do with it, I'm super excited to torture her with this device. It excites my soul and heart to make her suffer through the past. You know, and use and a keyboard. next That's you should give her a phone that with a dial on it. I think that would be really good. This is the BlackBerry, uh, what is it, the Key 2? Yeah. or key There is something satisfying and gratifying about typing in with this keyboard, though. I will say that. I don't know if it's nostalgia, but it made me feel good inside, literally typing with yeah, this Yeah, but thing. it's weird because it's the size of a normal phone, but they shrink the screen to put the but keyboard it's still on it. It's a decent size screen. It's still... Yes. Well, I, got, I, don't know. I got three phones right here. It's it's still pretty... So like whatever you do... It's on my iPhone. Don't do what I did. I went out and bought a Huawei P20. That's the one with the really good three cameras and the Leica lens mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And now I learn... <laughs> That the DNC is saying, whatever you do, candidates, do not use a Huawei or ZTE phone, even if it's free. <laughs> even if they're giving it away because they're owned by and founded by former members of the Chinese military. And the DNC is worried. You know, the GNC is already worried that the Russians are going to hack them. Uh, now they sent out a notice after they learned that a democratic organization was considering buying ZTE phones for staffers, they said, don't. Whatever you do, don't. Do you guys worry about Chinese phones spying on you? Nope. No. Nope. Not one bit. <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I, I look at that P20 sitting on my dresser thinking, what's it, what's it sending back? Everything you own. Oh, I'm, okay. <laughs> Okay. As long as, that, you, as, long as you have an is, internet connection, something is phone and home. I know. Period. I mean, but I, yeah. I I should trust Apple, right? They're not they're not doing anything with that information they get from my iPhone. Are they, they said they're not, so does, you should trust them. Oh, okay. <laughs> does it? Do, 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 you can read right. Look at the back of your phone right now. And tell me what it says at the bottom of your phone. It know, says designed in California. Is it made in California? No, it's made in China. Is it built in California? No, it's made in China. Uh, Okay then. So I, I, at the end of the day, everything you own—they're all is Chinese to, phones. I—I I tell you what, Facebook, I, face, Facebook is spying. Okay, I'm talking to somebody about pillows, and by the time I get home, I got a list of pillows oh, no. on my Facebook. No, ads. no, no, oh, yeah. no. They be spying. No, they be spying. No, what are the odds? No, no, what are the no, odds? No. They're spying. No, no. You say they are. No. They are. Gotta be. No. Where's my full hat at? Where's my full hat at? You. They spying. Are you? Are you saying? You're standing on the street just talking with a friend about a product, and you go home and you see ads for it. That's like yeah. when you buy a car. All of a sudden, you see a lot of people driving that car. That's all. Again, I, I might be feeling some sort of way. I might even be delusional. I'm just saying that it's happened in my mind, and where I'm crazy or not, I don't know. I just know there's been two or three times, one where I was talking about cats. I don't even like cats, and I got stuff for cats. On my Facebook. Now I understand it doesn't when I go to Amazon or I go click on something about. I you know get why? Because you Sometimes held for three seconds longer. That it is. That's it. The Bader Meinhof phenomenon. You held for three seconds longer on Instagram. You were looking at a cat and you sent a signal to Facebook. He likes cats. That I believe they're doing. Totally believe that. Are you like going to use said. the uh, Facebook now? Ed and I are, are gainfully married, as are you, Amp. But but Owen, I think you're single. Are you going to use yeah. the Facebook dating app? <laughs> as as Casey Newton writes in The Verge, let the poking begin. 
unfortunately for me, um, the way I live my lifestyle on the internet, uh, I'll explain it very quickly. I was talking to a girl. We're out on a date. She's like, oh, have you ever used Tinder? I'm like, no, nah, I don't use Tinder. She's like, oh, don't lie. Everybody use Tinder. Check that. I'm like, I don't. I was like, I can prove 100%. If I can prove to you that I don't use Tinder, then you got to pay for dinner. She said, okay, because you can't prove it. So I opened up Tinder, and uh, Facebook thinks I'm 63 years old. And the lovely 70-plus-year-old <laughs> women that were on my Tinder no, you were gotta not set up your profile, dude. <laughs> it is set up to my profile. It uses my Facebook profile. Oh. I was born in 1949. Oh, I see. I'm you're a, lying to Facebook, I, and you're I, complaining white, about what Tinder does as a result? you got to tell I, the truth. I am, I am a white male that lives in New York City by the name of Owan, born in 1949. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't use Tinder, and that's for that reason, because I'm not really fishing for 70-year-olds. But nothing well, against 70-year-olds. Why do you lie to you Facebook? Because I, I, I don't trust the Internet. I told you I got a full hat on. <laughs> I'm not. I don't trust it. I lie about every. I Twitter bet you, though, here's the interesting age. Here's the interesting thing. The day that people found out that Facebook was doing dating, the stock price of the Match Group, which owns Tinder and OkCupid, okay plunged 17%. This is, this is going to everybody, you and I, and, and everybody who listens to this show probably is suspicious of Facebook, but the average person says, yay, it's about time Facebook did dating, right? But, but you've just described... Uh, you know, we're going back to the beginning of the show now. You've just described the same phenomenon that happens to every business when uh, when there's even the slightest bit of news, slightest yeah, bit of rumor market, that Amazon's yeah. going to enter yeah. it. The yeah. stock price goes down 10 percent. And then over the course of the next two weeks, as everyone realizes, oh, wait a minute, this isn't, you know, this is just normal capitalism at work. The stock price goes up. Uh, goes back where it was. The stock market is driven by all these right. it, insane. You want to talk about signals? The insane signals that go to market traders this is exactly this kind of thing. How many times has Facebook launched a new product that has failed spectacularly? I mean, you could you could just do a big long list of of all the things that they've done that have failed. Yeah. Given their reputation, I would be shocked. If a, a Facebook dating app turned out to be successful in less than, you know, may, maybe in version 6.0 after five years, they might be able to get it right. But uh, they don't have a good track record with this kind of stuff. What? But on Ed the is on the nose. On the nose, Ed. Go ahead, I, Ed. I don't like the idea of it. I, I think it's a. Uh, um, logical step for Facebook to take as far as trying to get into sure. the dating world and what have you, but I don't like the security aspect of it because there's already enough issues with Facebook and, and privacy and security on there right now, and now you're making people even more vulnerable um, by giving them an avenue to quote-unquote right. date someone, and it, it, you never know what's going to happen. And Facebook already has a personal track record of being the worst matchmaking <laughs> site on the Facebook. You know how many lives that Facebook has ruined from Susie and Earl getting back together because they used to hook up in the sixth yeah, grade. That's really and true. Earl's got six kids that's, that's really and his true. wife. And he yeah. thinks that Susie's love is real love. And he leaves his wife and his kids yeah. and then finds out yeah. that Susie is now a man. Things are crazy on Facebook. How many, you gotta how many, people, how many relationships do you think Facebook has created? How many is it broken up? I Broken up twice as many as it's created. Twice as many. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. That that, that sounds. I, I'll I'll go with that. Yeah. Maybe eighty twenty. <laughs> you know? There you go. <laughs> you guys are cynics. How about Everybody this? Needs to be like Apple me Apple's going to do a, in iOS twelve late next month is going to start uh, warning you when you use your phone or individual apps too much. Uh, apparently, Android P, uh, which is about to come out in a couple of weeks. Uh, won't do it right away, but we'll do it eventually. Now Facebook and Instagram are adding dashboards to help you manage their, your time on their apps. This seems to be uh, all the rage in Silicon Valley. How long I give before... give credit for that. I like that idea. Or, but, you know, I have to say, I tried it on iOS 12 and I turned it off because it was What's annoying. Up? Well, every time I tried to launch Instagram in the middle of the night... Because I couldn't sleep, it said, "You know, you really should be. God, it's nagging you. You should really be asleep. Like, don't, Leo. Go behind the bed, Mister Report. Come on. 
I'm I sorry, can't Theo. sleep. What do you want I'm me to do? Stare I at the ceiling? <sighs> I'm sorry, what, Leo. What? Are, what? Exactly. Sleep, I'm sorry, productive. Leo. You've locked at YouTube way too much. You should Sh stop Sh now. Oh. Sh sh shameless plug. Uh, I just started a new podcast called Raising a Ninja. And the first episode, Ooh. the intro episode, is talking about devices in my daughter. And my daughter is 11 years old. She's had a phone since she was four. She can regulate and control herself and has a extreme amount of resilience when it comes to that, doing things too often. You know why? Because I spend time with her. I talk to her. I show her how to use the devices and the apps and the games. And she doesn't have an addiction. When she gets in trouble, I take her phone two or three days. She doesn't even ask for the phone back. She's not addicted to it because we've set these things in line to keep under control. I don't, you people know me. I don't be tweeting all the time. Shoot, I don't even do my podcast all the time like I'm supposed to because sometimes I got to coach my kids, spend my time, live the life. The last thing I need is this phone wasting my battery, telling me that I'm wasting my battery looking at Instagram. <laughs> I'm looking at Instagram because I've been in the bathroom for an hour and a half and I need to keep scrolling. I don't need you to tell me how long I've been in the bathroom, okay? I don't need you to tell me how long I've been watching a podcast, listening to a show, watching Uncle Leo on Twitter. Keep this junk off my phone, wasting my battery. Well, it, with doesn't, your it doesn't hurt no. to have it, does it? You you it don't hurt. need that, but there's so many people that are addicted to it. I think, it, yeah. They could benefit from I it. I think he's lucky that his daughter is sensible, but there's lots of kids you could do all the and, same parenting and they'd be spending all their time playing Fortnite. Yes. And I can remember a time telling an alcoholic, hey, you shouldn't have another drink. That huh, worked. Smoking weed, you shouldn't <laughs> smoke any more weed. Those cigarettes are bad for you. Yeah, you know you works. shouldn't smoke them. Yeah. Like, let me run off the list of addictions that people listen to because their phone gave them a charm every five seconds saying, bling, you've been on here too long. That's ridiculous. It's dumb. And unless it's for kids, it's not going to work. Uncle Leo just told you. He's sitting there with his facial recognition. Got the light all bright in his face in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't I can't get it to recognize me. It won't exactly. recognize me, and so I have Apple, to. <laughs> who Apple dumb like that? Yeah, so go ahead and listen to the little. That's why you need to grow a beard. Leo. <laughs> grow, grow a beard, a, grow and a beard, beard and it would recognize you. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you could make the case. You're right, Owen. That actually, the reason Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, and Apple all are doing this is because it makes them look good, and they know perfectly well it's not going to reduce usage at all. Their no. entire Unless business model, every single one of those businesses have a business model that is based on uh, provoking engagement, right. provoking reactions, escalating engagement That's and right. reactions from people. That's where the money comes from. Right. And so the idea that they're going that that they're somehow going to stop you from doing that thing makes no economic sense whatsoever. So what and about you, France? <laughs> I love it. They have you know, wonderful wines. Uh, you know, French school children really fast. French school children up to the age of fifteen will have to leave their smartphone switched off or at home. This is a national law. It was a campaign promise by uh, President Macron. And it's now a uh, reality in France. Uh, the schools could make exceptions for pedagogical use, extracurricular activities, or disabled pupils. But for the most part, uh, kids will not be able to bring smartphones to class. Now, that seems like a good idea. I dig it. So, so in, in my district, in different schools are different. All the way up until middle school, <clears throat> even if you have a phone on you, you're not allowed to have it on in your classroom it has to be yeah, they'll take it, it right off. if it rings yeah, it's but, gone yeah so, yes that it, it rings it's gone once you get into sixth grade they use their phones or they give the kids tablets for as, as their calculator they run apps on them for the classes and things of that nature so the way our setup is instead of using chromebooks we use tablets so it's the same thing the kids are using iMessage to talk to each other in class or whatever they're doing so taking it away is great and all but we live in america this is not france my daughter has an Apple Watch on her, and her teacher has been instructed that no matter what, she's not allowed to take this from her because in case of school shooting, my daughter can hit the SOS button and call me and call the police and let me know. So she has to have that device on her 24-7, 365, and I feel like taking phones away from kids in America is not a good thing because we have other things to worry about besides mm. kids playing Fortnite in the middle of class. And if that's up okay. to the teacher to handle their business and make sure that the kids 
aren't on their phones because if the teacher's paying attention to the kids, the kids got to be paying attention to the teacher. It's really simple. Okay, that's fair. I, I, I never even thought about it that way. But considering how bad things have gotten in the schools here in this country, it that makes total sense. It's interesting because the argument in France exactly parallels our, our argument here. Uh, the opponents, Macron's opponents say, this is this is purely cosmetic. It's not going to change behavior. It makes people feel good, but people, but kids are still going to use phones. So having a law is not is is just it's for show. Kind of what we were just and talking it, about. Yeah, and it's easier to control in France because it's a small place. It's not that small and compared to the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> well, could we have? Would we ever? I mean, not that the not that a Congress is able to pass anything, but would you think we'd ever be able to get a a law like that in the U.S.? I don't think so. We can't get a blanket. I don't know if there's one blanket law besides don't kill somebody that we have in this country. That's a good point. Different states, yeah, different states, different folks. Yeah. So I don't, I, again, I feel well, like even kids. In, and even in Florida, you've got the standard. You your could ground kill somebody. Law. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, there you go. You know. <laughs> America. America. Uh, all right. Um, what You're going to get some emails this oh, week. Oh, man. Like. I know. I'm just, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> It always uh, happens when I'm on. No, it's a horrible situation. I apologize. No, but we love you, Owen. It's okay. It, it. I know why you love me. Did you just take? Did you just take a shot of whiskey, uh, Aunt Pruitt, or is that uh, is that medicinal? <laughs> <laughs> Aunt's got the important staples: popcorn, and whenever and whenever brown I'm liquor. Podcasting. Whenever I'm <laughs> editing photos or video, I always have music. And or a good old drama scotch. I thought I, thought, that, I, thought I saw that. Keep now that's your good. That explains your, your smooth steady. voice. How nice you because it's just so lubricated. <laughs> I should try that. It's just how I roll. That's it's nice. Comforting. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Popcorn and brown liquor. Our show title today. Actually, yes. I was I was <laughs> I was thinking of making it the uh, title of this uh, blog post by Nick here on his Pixel Envy blog, but then I realized it's not polite. He uh, calls it, you could show it, I guess, the BS web. And uh, he actually raises some really good points. We'll talk about that in uh, just a little bit. Before we go on, uh, let me play. Look, we, this would be a good time to play our uh, our, our house. We, Dvorak always called our house ad, our promo for the week on Twit. And then we'll come back uh, with more from our esteemed panel. If you missed anything this week, you missed some good stuff, watch. Previously on Twit. Uh, you know, we have to continue the tradition here, so I guess I'll just ask you, Alex, can you tell us the just main topic of the show for today? I don't really remember, but what, what do you think it is? I think it was Woo! networking. Father Robert! Networking. We, we think it's networking. <laughs> Fantastic. It's great to see Pradri there. This week in law. If you are traveling to Egypt, do not complain about your experiences there on social media in any way, shape, or form. A woman vacation tourism in Egypt and didn't have a very good time. And she uh, complained she was subjected to sexual harassment. She complained about various aspects of the country. Government officials ultimately finding her guilty of deliberately spreading false rumors that would harm society. She has been sentenced to eight years in prison prison. Uh, you know, do we need to be considering everything we post now on social media and what effects it might have if we were to leave the country and go to some other country? All about Android. So this is the Lenovo Smart Display and it is the first Google Assistant with display device. There's plenty more coming out this summer. This is just kind of the first wave. Yeah, this bamboo back really makes me want to, like, etch something into it. Please don't do that. Burke what is happening? Oh, wow. Bur Burke has, has wow. come through. Well, you asked Burke for a knife. Of course he's going to come through. What are you doing? No, I'm just kidding. I won't do that. A... You took that joke really far, Jason. I'm happy I'm not in the studio with my hardware this week. <laughs> this is your brain. This is your brain on Twit. Any questions? We actually got uh, a little bit of uh, time with that new Lenovo Google Assistant. And I was at, a little disappointed. And we're going to have to do more reviewing. Jason's going to have a review for us. Uh, we, we showed it off on the new screensavers yesterday. It doesn't seem to have all the capabilities of a, of a Google Home device. It's, it won't do some of the things that you could do with a Google Home, which really disappoints me because it's kind of awesome. It's an it's a 8 or 10-inch screen that could be used as a TV. You could watch Netflix on an Amazon Prime, except none of that worked. I so, want it really bad. Yeah. But, but don't get it. I'm yet. hoping for updates. Well, I'm gonna get it from you. 
like we discussed. Oh, I'll just hand it down. There'll yeah. be an update. There'll be an update. Don't worry about it's it. Not, update. It's 249 bucks for the 10-inch. That's the one I would get because it's like a kitchen. It's like a TV. Yeah. And then you can do all the other stuff, the Google stuff. I've been waiting for a Google Home with a screen on it, so I, I need I know. it in my life. I, I have, I've, I've converted I know. over to the Google, and uh, she is my friend. Yeah. I just I wish this were a... F I just assumed that Lenovo would use the same exact software and but apparent I don't know if they're doing their own servers or what, but it's not the same as a very much like uh like the Fire Cube doesn't do all of Amazon's Echo stuff, which is also weird to me. Which is very silly. Yeah, it's Am it's from I Amazon. Don't, I don't know. And it's a more powerful but I don't get that at all. That yeah. makes no sense to me. Well, it's but. good for reviewers because it means we need to help people make the right buying decisions. <laughs> These things are not obvious. Companies are not telling you what they're doing. Yeah. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. Yes, I know you use, you use, right. You, come on. You, every, everybody uses LastPass. You ought to. It is the password vault that means you're more secure because you're using strong passwords. You don't have to remember them. It generates them for you. It will it securely stores all the information. I use LastPass to keep my driver's license, my social security, uh, all our corporate information. I mean, it is really secure storage for everything, especially passwords. But have you thought about LastPass in your business? If this was this was something I was just blind to, Remember, when you're using passwords in business, and you are, you're giving employees access to, I don't know, your QuickBooks, your bank account, your website, your storage, all the stuff they have access to. And that really can be a problem. We've I've learned my lesson. I just kind of said, oh, that's fine, whatever. I learned my lesson when one of our engineers put all our passwords up on a public website because he couldn't remember them. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we went to LastPass Enterprise. Uh, but the nice thing is when you're using LastPass in business, uh, you can completely control it. You have over 100 policies. You can get security reports. Uh, your passwords are protected. You can share your QuickBooks passwords with the people who need access to it only. And you can even share it in a way that not only can they not change it, they can't even see it. So they log into the site, but they don't know what the password is. That's the kind of thing you need. Uh, it makes them generate strong passwords. We enforce one of the policies that we enforce is two-factor authentication. It protects the most important stuff in our business. Uh, even if credentials end up being compromised through phishing attacks, because we use two-factor, we acquire two-factor, outsiders don't have access to our stuff. Employees can log into LastPass now with their Microsoft Active Directory. So if you've got uh, AD and you've got credentials, then they really literally only have to one remember one password, their AD password, and they're in. Uh, we uh, offer it as a benefit to our employees, a personal version of LastPass. And one of the nice things about LastPass Enterprise, one login gives you access both to your enterprise account and to a completely separate, completely encrypted, separately personal account, so you don't have to have two versions of LastPass running all the time. I really like that. LastPass for, for individuals is LastPass Premium. LastPass Families for the entire family. I love the sharing capability, both at home and at work. You know, the engineering department can share all their passwords, but nobody else at work has access to them. Uh, and LastPass Teams, if you have a small business for teams of 50 or fewer, we use the LastPass Enterprise. It's awesome. We're, we're so happy we have it. And, and when you realize that 81% of all uh, breaches come from weak passwords or reused passwords, you realize how important this is. Protect your business with LastPass. It celebrated its 10th anniversary in July. Happy anniversary, LastPass. I've been using it practically that long. I know we got Steve Gibson using it about six years ago when he interviewed the, fun, the founder of LastPass, Joe Segrist, and he was able to look at the code and he said, yeah, this is the right thing. This is the right way to do it. LastPass.com slash twit. More than 13 million people trust LastPass. It's the number one most preferred password manager. And now use it in business too. Lastpass.com slash twit. I just I loved this article by Nick here just because I couldn't agree more. He calls it the BS web. But what he's talking about is as our internet connections have sped up, access to websites has slowed down because there's so much junk. He says the average internet connection on in the United States is about six times as fast as it was ten years ago. But instead of making it faster to browse, 
we're simply occupying that extra bandwidth with more junk. In 2006, partly it's watching movies. Apple added movies to iTunes Store. But really, the real problem is, well, here's an example. The CNN article. Uh, which took 20 seconds to load. 11 web fonts totaling 414 kilobytes. Four style sheets, 315 kilobytes. Tw this is one page. 20 frames. 29 XML HTTP requests totaling 500 kilobytes. 100 scripts. Several megabytes worth. And, it, it, and on and on and on. And we've all noticed this. It is... It is it's all about revenue stream, sir. Oh, it's so sad. And, and Ed Bott, I know you remember this as we got more bandwidth, faster processors, more RAM. It didn't, it, it just meant programs bloated up, right? Right, right. It's, it's the paradox of Moore's Law. And this is sort of the cousin of the Moore's Law paradox uh, with, a, with an evil twin uh, <laughs> hanging around there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I guess there's there we all agree it's not like there's any controversy here. It's not like also there's anything you didn't know here. Uh, but I, I do like the idea and, and maybe there maybe there's something to be said for you know, bring this to people's attention and trying to slim it down. There was Google Amp, he says that didn't do anything. But here uh, but 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 we're back to the uh, an, an analog of the same thing we were talking about fifteen minutes ago. Uh, you know, the the economic model of the web for for better or worse mostly worse is based on the idea that everything has to be free and for everything to be free uh, you know it costs a lot of money to have these people writing these things the the, the those servers cost money all that stuff costs a lot of money and yet everyone wants them for free yep. so pages are cluttered up with terrible ugly stupid ads and uh, and tracking pixels and things that are just building dossiers on us that have the potential to ruin our lives. Uh, and and there's no end in sight to it. And so now it, it and it's become an arms war between the people building the crappy ads and surveillance systems and us. And I know in the essay, he mentions, you know, the rise in ad blockers now. Well, now the the next level of the arms race is ad blocker blockers. Yep. So and and so you go to a site and it, hi, I see you're using an ad blocker. Would you like to whitelist us? And it's and now it's a you know, you can either I like the ones that say, you know, uh, no, I don't you know, I, I, I'm just going to continue using my <laughs> ad blocker, but others and then but then there's the others that say, no, we're you know, we're going to we're going to block you right yep. back. You, yep. you can't you can't come through. And those are the ones that you know, I'll, I'll pay. You know, I'll I'll pay to get this this crap off there. Those, those especially the Tabula outbrain. Oh God, that stuff. Rev horrible. content. Yeah. That you know that stuff is. Uh, I mean, that's the that's the garbage. That uh, and and it's you know and you just having that stuff thrown in your face, every page that you visit, it's it's exhausting. I, I call BS on that stat of 20 seconds to load CNN. I just loaded it on Chrome, uh, Outlook, Firefox, my iPhone, my my uh, Lenovo, my LG. It took like five seconds on all of them. They have a text version too for the site. I mean, what kind of ne network connection is, were they using? It took 20 seconds to load the page. I haven't had that problem or that issue. Um, maybe it's the youth of my internet. Uh, I haven't had any. Uh, functionality problems over on my end. Do you, you know run an saying? ad blocker though? I'm always. I do not. Okay. I do not. The only thing that I run, which I cannot run when I do the show, is uh, my proxy to lock me up and make it look like I'm in Brazil or something. Do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. Have to turn I, to, off I, we, I told you on. I'm a white guy in New York. You think my <laughs> internet ain't disguised in my nationality and ethnicity? So wait. <laughs> okay. yeah. Is it a VPN or just a proxy? Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a VPN and a proxy. I'm running my own kind of all the time. Kind of you run that all the time, unless yeah. I'm on with you because it won't let me chat with the, with the people. And I'm a man of the people, so I got to turn it off when I'm on oh, Twitter. That's interesting, huh? huh. I, I totally get 
the having to have the the ads and things like that on the site. You know, they, my, we my got to monetize. Contributor Tech Republic, right yeah. there, yeah. and I can invoice Tech Republic for a reason. They they can pay me for it, and I know they got to get their money somewhere to pay me, and that's that's one way to do it. It's you got to have those ads. You know, it's going to fix everything. Blockchain. <laughs> People still don't know what blockchain Nobody is. Nobody knows. So That's why really it's so popular because <laughs> it's a techie sounding thing. And it's got to be great because I don't understand it. Actually, uh, here's an article that comes from a Bloomberg. I'm reading it from the LA Times because I can't use Bloomberg because I've used up my free articles. But uh, the LA Times apparently doesn't have a uh, paywall. Uh, according to Forrester Research, the uh, the number of uh, sites claiming the use of blockchain is is going to be uh, is a lot lower this year. That fewer and fewer people are talking about blockchain. That it's it was there was a lot of hype. Only one percent of chief information officers are planning any kind of blockchain adoption. Uh, nearly nearly eighty percent of CIOs said they have no interest in blockchain. So, Leo, I, I put uh, I, I changed my Twitter bio about oh, yeah? six months ago. Yeah. And I said, uh, you know, tech journalist now with added blockchain. It's just a, you know. And did your a, stock price go up 45 percent? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I mean, it, what's what's 45 uh, percent more than zero? You know? uh, do you uh, do you you know, we were talking about. Uh, with added, but, but here, wait, 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 let me just finish that thought. I, I now get so many PR pitches. Oh, no. Blockchain people. Oh, In fact, no. I got invited last week, you know, and I said, we're, you know, we want you to come to a blockchain conference in Hyderabad, India. We'll pay your way. What? Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> let I me said, put blockchain oh, yeah. in my bio. I want to go to Hyderabad. I want to go to Hyderabad. I don't even know where it is, but I want to go. <laughs> It's, 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 in, it's in up. India, <laughs> India, and you do not want to go to India in August. No. Oh yeah, thing. you are one hundred percent right about that. It, it makes Never it mind. makes New York in August look like a spa vacation, you know. So, so I said no to them, but uh, but seriously, I just added the word blockchain to my Twitter bio, nothing else, and I am on so many. PR lists now, and uh, I got one. I got one the other day that I, I put on my. I, I shared it on my Twitter feed because it was so funny. It says, you know, will the next uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers Rainbow Bright be enabled by the blockchain? I said, what? What? what the <laughs> Makes no <laughs> sense whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I had I put that up on my on my wow. Twitter. Wait, wait, somebody feed. sent you that as a pitch, a PR pitch? Yeah. As a PR pitch. Wow. I kid you not. And uh I, I should have kept reading so I could figure out what in God's name they were talking about, but just nah, couldn't. I don't think so. You just, just, you just couldn't do it. Yeah. Plunk. <laughs> Uh, you know, we were, they were wow. talking about uh, people, uh, uh, this was in the uh, promo earlier, in Egypt, uh, tourists getting in trouble for tweeting negative comments, ending up with jail, eight years of jail time. There is a trend, I think, now to delete your Twitter history. James Gunn, of course, the director of the first two episodes of Gal Guardians of the Galaxy, fired for uh, inappropriate jokes he made in the early days of Twitter when it wasn't unusual to see inappropriate jokes. Uh, his cast is standing up for him, saying, "You know, that's not the guy we know." Um, Len Greenwald just uh, deleted his uh, entire Twitter history, everything before 20, 2016, He deleted. Well, I have a friend who's very well known in Hollywood, uh, and uh, he uh, sent me an email saying, "What's the best way to delete my Twitter history?" Uh, it's sad because uh, people are very afraid that they said something six, eight, ten years ago, and uh, that it can come back to haunt them. It's not that sad. Um, first of all, I can't deal with the, the gun thing and the protection of them because I don't play around with kid jokes. 
I don't find it amusing on any level. You're a 40 year old man. There were more than one or two or three or five or six tweets on that subject and that topic. So I have it was no a little sympathy. creepy. I, I agree I, with you. I have no sympathy. But there's no context that. for, you know, Twitter 2008 or whatever it was. There's there's context for a 40 year old man speaking in a public forum out to the world. That's okay. my context of that situation. Okay. Other people were making jokes and different things. And I get it. You know, I, I trust you, me, I, I get on here and I, and I try to bring levity to technology and I make all kinds of jokes and I goof off all the time. So as a person like that, I get it. I, I don't want to see comedy go away. I don't want to see the white comic get roasted for making a black joke. I don't want to see the black comic get roasted for making an Asian joke. They're comics. I get jokes and I get making fun of ourselves as a people in a class. If you want to delete your old tweets just to be safe, I don't feel like it's a sad thing because people say dumb things. And really, who cares what you said eight years ago? Because all you end up doing is sounding like Donald Trump. I like pancakes, man. I hate pancakes. Like, so if you delete it, it's fine. Go ahead and do what you got to do. But it's, it's not something I feel sad over. It's something that if you feel that you need to delete it and you should and you feel some sort of way about the things that you said and you're not that person, if you're not that person, then go ahead and delete your old tweets. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's it's hard to Aren't find the line. Aren't you tempted to go back through your old tweets just to make sure? Or no, no. I said outlandish stand, stuff today. You stand I by your tweets. <laughs> I said outlandish stuff uh, three weeks ago. There was a guy making an argument with me. And he, then the first thing he went and tweeted was, Uncle Leo, how could you have someone like this on your show? And I'm like, well, he said something about my daughter, and I ripped him apart for it. You can't talk about my daughter. It's child risky, though. Look at, Sarah, to, look at Sarah. Look at Sarah John. Around. Look at Sarah Jong. She was she's recently put on the New York Times editorial board, and of course, the first thing that happened is people went through her Twitter feed, and she had been harassed for a long time for being an outspoken progressive feminist on Twitter, and her choice in fighting that was trolling them, trolling the trolls back, which you know, like hashtag cancel white people. And there was a huge amount of backlash around that. Now, the New York Times, to their credit, uh, uh, has, has standard, stood up for. But still, I, I, I want to stop you right there, Leo. There was not a huge amount of pushback on that. There was an orchestrated campaign from a bunch of professional right wing trolls, Mike Cernovich and his gang, yeah. who mm. do this stuff for a living. And well, that's what uh, happened to James Gunn, too, right? Right, well, it is, uh, uh, and at least in at least in his case, they were able to find things that were. Uh, I mean, they were truly difficult to defend. I went I went through and read the Cernovich gang's uh, things from that they that they pulled up on on Sarah Jong. In fact, the day she was announced as being named to the editorial board of the New York Times, I tweeted like five minutes after that press release came out, I said, ladies and gentlemen, you watch 24 hours from now, Mike Cernovich is going to have an orchestrated attack on Sarah Jong using her old tweets. Because yep. I followed her Twitter account you knew, for, you knew. For, for six or eight years. Yeah. And 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 I, I then went, I also went back and looked at a lot of the things that, uh, that they were quoting and they were literally completely out of context. Right. You know, there's 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 things that I can't say. There's one N.W.A. song that she loved to quote, uh, just quote the title of that N.W.A. song uh, as a as an ironic uh, shutdown for any discussion of people in positions of authority. But you remove uh, that it, tweet from its context. It right. looks bad. No, it doesn't oh, look oh, bad. Oh, oh. Well, you understand it's an also, NWA lyric. You also, I want to say that as humans, we also are doing a much better job. That one baseball player who is 26 years old had tweets when he was like 15, 17, saying the N-word and stuff like that. And he gave a very basic example. Hey, I grew up in a backwater town. That's how people talked about things. Now that I'm in the league and, and, I've, and I've gotten to meet other people of other cultures, other faiths, I realized that what I was doing was wrong. And I can believe his statement of saying, hey, my upbringing had me talking reckless and saying stuff like that. But my professional life and where I've lived now has had me learn and grow and my teammates support me in that. So that a couple of players had that issue. And again, teammates come out and support them. So depending Redemption on what it is, is a good thing. Yeah. yes, Redemption depending on what it is, 
people people do understand what's going on. I, I just can't get behind the gun thing because I, I don't mess with kids at all. That it's like going to jail. The things they don't mess with, you don't mess with nobody's mom, you don't mess with kids. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm just gonna put out a blanket tweet here soon <laughs> to say, you know what? I've said some pretty dumb sh in the we past. We all have. I have. Twitter and, um, let itself to I'm lends fine with it, it let it go. I'm just yeah. lucky I can say so, the N word anytime I want. Nobody, I don't have to worry about all them old tweets. <laughs> nobody <laughs> here, you're saying none of you would even consider deleting old tweets. No, I'm no. not deleting anything. I've said it and uh, yeah. Own up to it. It know. probably doesn't work anyway because you know you could people can save them and screenshot them. And, well, uh, they they can, but uh, there is no uh, there is no archive of of Twitter, and that's a that's a really interesting thing. Library so of Congress has the archive. No, they don't. They announced that they were going to do that in 2010, yeah. and then it never happened. Oh, interesting. So, oh, what? So Wait. then, just let's just delete our tweets every year and then call it call it a wrap. I can start there talking are, real reckless there now. Are fair, there are a fair number of people who do exactly that. They do it every quarter, even. Um, and if and if you want to do that, if you don't want to have people, uh, you know, just writing, you know, just posting garbage about you, uh, calling you a hypocrite because you said something two years ago, and now your uh, your your attitude has changed on it, uh, you can avoid that being a thing if you're famous enough to be the target of, of something like that. Uh, you know, but there is no archive right there. So the only That's interesting. I did not the know only that. way that somebody can can find those things is there are random numbers of them that were screen capped by people at the time. So right. you might be able to find those. But if you there, there is no Twitter archive, you if you delete your tweets, the likelihood is that most of the things that you said will never come back to haunt you. Somebody on this show once said, I wish I could remember who it was. For all I know, it's you, Owen. Uh, the problem with Twitter is that it's the kind of thing you'd say around the water cooler, but because it's in print, it's preserved as if it was an essay mm -hmm. and treated yeah. as if you thoughtfully crafted that tweet True. when it <laughs> might well just be something you said off, you know, you were half in the can. That's, that's the biggest thing I hate about Twitter platform. in general. Yeah. Yeah. And in Twitter, it's just so quick. You know, you know how many typos I have when I just tweet things because I'm just like off the top. Ah, yeah. Da, 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 da. I spelled is it getting my name wrong? worse? Like, oh, man, I can't edit that. Is it getting worse because the president himself is willing to use Twitter in that kind of half baked way? I mean, he tweeted basically yeah. a racist tweet yesterday about LeBron James a, and Don Levin. A well, racist tweet? A many, but this was the most it's, recent. It's, so let me tell you, let me tell you about that. That that's a perfect example of what I'm saying about oh. people changing their minds. So this is uh, a girl. No, this is a guy at a club talking to a hot girl and she's not responding. Hey, you're pretty. Let me buy you a drink. You want to hang out? And she says, no, thanks, and leaves. And then you get mad and start writing her number on the wall and calling right. her all kinds of names. It's like he that. tweeted LeBron James. I love his work ethic. They're down in Miami about to win the championship. He won the ESPY awards. He's a great man and deserves it. <laughs> LeBron didn't LeBron respond. James gets asked to, get Le, never responded to him at all. LeBron says one thing when he asked a question. He said, look, he's trying to divide us. And he's like, oh, LeBron James is the worst person <laughs> in the world. And he never did anything for anybody. Like, you sound yeah. like such a, a scorn lover. This dude is so weak and pathetic, regardless of your political views. He's just mentally By weak. By the way, because for legal reasons, the one person who can't delete his tweet history... It's Donald Trump. Oh, that's right. It's all uh, public record. Well, they're, yeah, they're uh, presidential uh, the communications. Public record yeah, it's public. Public I didn't record know check. that. Yeah, I didn't know that. So, so it's fun when people you, dig that stuff up. But you, <laughs> you know. can delete your tweet, but yeah. you can't delete his. I just block people. I say crazy stuff, and I'm like, block. Ha -ha! Go steal. Go deal with the pain and the suffering. Of my tweet. <laughs> now nah, I block you. No matter what you say back to me, I can't hear it. That's usually my thing for trolls when they get out of hand. Hey, have you? Uh, uh, go ahead. My, my my problem is actually the exact opposite of what uh, most most people have. When I started on Twitter, I was very conscious of being, you know, a well-known tech journalist, and I, you know, I I wanted to be careful. I didn't want to be uh, overtly political. I wanted to avoid using profanity. Uh, those who follow me now are are uh, are laughing, <laughs> but for the first 
for the for the first three or four years, I was I was very careful and controlled and almost I was almost my own PR shop. And then it, I think at one point, I, you know, I, I think I asked my followers, I probably had, you know, 10,000 followers at that time. And I said something like, you know, who out there would be uh, offended if I, you know, if, if I dropped an F-bomb here? And one or two people said, you know, we'd really prefer that you didn't. And most people said, you know, it sounds like F you've it. got a couple of saved up. <laughs> so, and, and so, you know, I, I think I'm much more authentic now. And, you know, you, what you see is what you get. And and uh, and yet also, I don't I really don't say anything that I'm not going to feel that I can stand behind next week, right. next month, next year. And if I make a mistake, if I do something where I've, I uh, have inadvertently wronged somebody by misquoting them or something, I, I, I'll call myself on it, you know? I'll correct myself, I'll apologize. I had an interaction with John Dickerson of CBS News where I, snarked, I said something snarky about him. He responded to me. We had this delightful interaction and I wound up apologizing to him for the the snarky thing that I said, and uh, you know, and amplifying a couple of the the things that he had said that I thought were worth repeating, and you know, that's what happens if you're authentic, uh, and and you're not trying to play a role and just be outrageous for outrageousness' sake. Right. right. And I will say this uh, to you: uh, since this is the first time we met, and I'll say it to your face, not to be snarky on the internet. You have the most trolling internet technology name I've ever seen. I wouldn't trust anything you said. <laughs> he is, you. It's actually you, a bot. You, you, you got Ed Bot on your name. I'm, like, I'm not listening to nothing Ed Bot got to say. Ed Bot got 50 They're always bot talking bot. about you, Ed. We got to get these Ed bots bot. off the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, got, you got a bad internet name, Ed. One, they got you on that one. One T. One T makes all the difference, man. <laughs> uh, this, uh, the AI is getting smart, Ed. That's all that tells me. AI, uh, two T's. <laughs> I, hey, I would smart. check your email from some uh, job offers from the Internet Research Association <laughs> agency. I think you might have something uh, going there. We need there bots. We need more bots. Let's get this Ed guy. He's a bot. So, Ed, you wrote a good review of the cutest computer I've ever seen. And yep. uh, and I I just got mine uh, on uh, Friday. It's the Surface Go. This is tiny. It's a 10-inch uh, Surface Windows machine. Right. It sells uh, It's uh, with Windows... S 10s on it, but you can instantly turn on Windows uh, 10 Home, which I did. Yeah, uh, no, that should be the number one thing that everyone does. Good lord, it's just. Well, fortunately, you don't even have to reboot it. You just you just download something from the store, and all of a sudden, you've got Windows 10 Home, and yeah. you can now put Chrome on it and other things. Uh, yeah. I haven't had it as long as you have. Uh, there are two questions I had that I haven't yet really come down come up with an answer for is. Battery life and speed. This is a weird processor from Intel, the Pentium Gold. What do you think? So, uh, and I had this discussion with a with a couple people uh, on Twitter just last week. As a matter of fact, well, how uh, about that? Uh, imagine, imagine that. Uh, it, if you understand the purpose of this device, this is a general purpose productivity and and casual entertainment device, which is the way that I used it and the way that I evaluated it. So running Office 365 apps, no problem. Uh, fast, Does zippy. It, it, actually, because it's the size of the screen, is it uh, using the touch first office? Is it using the, the tablet version? Oh, no, 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 no. No, this is a full PC. Okay. This is a this is an honest to God, uh, real copy of Windows running a 64-bit Windows, but and if you version, didn't, so you and I both have Office three sixty five subscriptions. It recognized mine and immediately loaded Office. But if we correct. didn't, would I be using the free version of Office on there? Well, you wouldn't have any version of no, none Office at all. Not. Okay, because okay. there was. I remember Microsoft said if it's a screen size ten inches or under. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Those were for, those were you know for tablets. You can't. It, it's almost impossible to actually find those apps in the store right. if you're on something that it thinks is a PC. Okay. Uh, and I also have, noted it's not in tablet mode, and even if you detach the keyboard, it stays in desktop mode unless you explicitly put it in tablet mode. They're treating this like a computer. 
It it is a it is a computer, uh, and so what's what's interesting about it? Well, just the other thing about the about the performance of it. If you try to play Fortnite on it, <laughs> if or you know or whatever right. you know some some game that demands that. a high frame rate, uh, you're going to be very disappointed. You know what if, you need an eGPU. Yes, <laughs> that's right. It weighs like ten a, times a, more than the computer. <laughs> <laughs> that computer's so if, light, it might even make it worth it traveling around with it, <laughs> unlike your MacBook if, Pro. If you try to run Photoshop on oh, it, yeah, be, uh, you, you know, it it will it'll work. You'll be able to get slow. it done, yeah. but you couldn't. You'll be able to do things that you couldn't do on an iPad. And, and that, to me, is ultimately the pitch for this device. This is an iPad, but it's running a desktop operating, a real operating system. Right, it is. When I set this up on my desk and then I put an iPad alongside of it with one of those Logitech keyboards on it, they're almost exactly the same yep. size. Yep. The aspect ratios are a little bit different. So, so, the, so this is a device for the person who has been saying, you know, I, I, the, my laptop is too heavy to drag around with me. It's three or four pounds. I just, it, it hurts when I carry it through the airport. I just don't want to have that with me. And so they're bringing the little external keyboard for the iPad and they're doing whatever their work is on that. This is the same, this is the same thing, except it does full PC workloads. And so what this it is does, essentially so, a step up from Chromebook? Uh, yeah. Uh, in, in a way, uh, it's, I, I mean, to me, what's fascinating about this is I've got, you know, I have a messenger bag that I normally would use if I'm going to a trade show in Europe next month. And normally I would carry a messenger bag with a, you know, with a three pound notebook in it and then a bunch and the charger and a bunch of other stuff that goes with that. And by the end of the day, my shoulder hurts. I have a small uh, a small bag, you know, your basic man bag. This thing actually fits in that. And yeah. I can carry this to the show with me. And in fact, I can snap the keyboard off and use the pen with it and take handwritten notes in one note when I'm at a press conference or something, which is something that I couldn't do be before. Yeah. You know, I, I could do that with an iPad with the magic pencil. But then if I go back, you know, our CMS at ZDNet doesn't it isn't exactly friendly to an iPad. You need to, you know, you need to have a Mac or a PC to really, you know, to use take advantage of all the features. And so this is actually that one device that I could carry that would, you know, it'll be a tablet. It'll I, I can I can download Netflix movies onto it. It runs Spotify and it runs iTunes. But it also runs the full Office 365, and it has a full web browser in it. I can run Google Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, whatever all, you all want. All of this if you turn off S, the S mode, obviously. All of those things, if, yeah, which uh, which I say everyone should do. There's no reason not to. Is there any reason not to? Uh, yeah, if I were giving this to uh, a, a, a extremely non-technical relative. Okay, who has a history of downloading of trouble, crap of down yeah. of of, <laughs> yeah. of of having me have to come over and clean up their machine right. because right. for whatever reason right. they got infected with something so, then yes i would cuz the s mode means you can only install apps from the microsoft store uh, which keeps you safe cuz you're not downloading weird crappy stuff uh, yeah and and you can run and you can download now itunes and spotify and slack and oh, a few other things from those the are store. all s Okay. Those are all in. Those are all available from the store. Chrome is the big one that's not. It, it's not, and it never, it never will be. Right, right. And that's the, what's battery and, life for you? I haven't had it long enough to know. Um, for for normal productivity use, uh, five to seven hours. That's fine. Uh, that's and adequate. and for for uh, watching videos like on a on a, a transatlantic plane flight, seven to eight hours. That's good. Uh, and of course, in on most planes these days, you've got a uh, you know there's a there's a plug there right. you can right. you can recharge. Uh, uh, it does and, charge through the C Type C port, which is for the first Surface that doesn't require that goofy Surface charging uh, connector, and it's that's the huge. Second, the yeah, Surface Book Two oh, okay. also has that, oh, but okay. it it has the Surface Connect. Uh, it does. Yes, 
the, and the and the charger. Let me see if I have. It's nice. It's light. I don't know why you'd use it because charger. you have everybody. I have Type C everywhere. Why don't? What do I need that for? Well, it, you know what they? It bothers me because it looks just like an SD card slot. <laughs> 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 so it's a little yeah. disappointing. <laughs> so Scoot's got uh, two ways to charge it. Okay. So, so the other, uh, well, and also the Type C dock, and I've used it for a docking station. Right. So you can do right. external monitor. Right. Uh, uh, I have the Surface Dock, which does use that Surface network. connector. So that that is one reason why you. Might yeah, but that. you can you can use like a Type C you know, dock. These yeah. Fifty dollar fifty dollar right. Type C docks that you get right. at Amazon for that. Now the one the one. Uh, there's two variations of the Surface Go, uh, and I have the the more exp there's the I have the more expensive As one. As do I, yeah, because I wasn't uh, going to get uh, 64 gigs of storage, and the it's four well, it, gigs of RAM is not as a non-starter. And it's not just well, I think for some people it would be. It's 64 gigs of eMMC storage right. as opposed really to slow. Uh, an, an SSD. Right. So that one's that one's going to be slow, but again. For somebody, you know, I would see this, and I wrote the, the headline on the articles, you know, the best cheap PC ever, and that's, you know, we could we could have a debate over that. But I would argue that this is an excellent replacement for somebody who is has this, uh, you know, seven or eight-year-old PC that originally came with Windows Vista, uh, you know, and, and it is just dog slow, Ugh, but they keep yeah. it. They, they keep it in the den because that's right. how the, you have to occasionally do something on a PC. And I would say this is a great replacement for something like that. Even at the even the, the low spec version that's four ninety nine, even though we as tech experts would would be horrified at you know you know having to wait an extra half a second for uh, for a program to load, somebody whose experience is with a seven or eight year old PC, uh, it will be a major upgrade for them. Yeah, there's so not going to be a good device for for writers in general. That you know people that are on the go writers, because uh, you don't have to have a lot of horsepower to to run a text editor, if you will. The drawback is it's a tiny screen and a tiny keyboard. Ed, were you able to write extensive passages with it? Yeah. Uh, now it helps that I'm a uh, uh, that that uh, if you're actually Mavis, only four foot three. If if Mavis yeah. Beacon <laughs> ever saw me type, uh, are you a hunt and pecker, huh? <laughs> oh man, it's it's uh, I'm a I'm an old school sports writer type. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I use I use all too. ten fingers. Yeah, but just like but me. Yeah, it's a it's an unorthodox <laughs> it's an un unorthodox style. Uh, I do know uh, Microsoft claims. Uh, that they did a lot of testing in their labs with people on this, and they say that that a good touch typist within about a week can get yeah. to about ninety seven percent of their wow. normal rate. That's pretty good. Uh, and I and I didn't find it. I you know I I didn't find it difficult. Uh, I didn't find it any more. It's exactly the same size as one of those iPad keyboards. Right. So if you can get used to one of those, right. you could get used to this. That's who this is aimed at. This is a, this is, I mean, it's, it's the same. It's a 10-inch screen. That's a good size. Yeah, it's the same size. The, no accident. It's the same price. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly aimed at, at that group. Although, I, yeah, I kind of, I'm, the other thing is it's dang cute. And I got the, it looks like you got the burgundy cover too i got the burgundy pen the burgundy cover and the, i even bought the burgundy mouse which is completely superfluous because it actually has a pretty good trackpad uh it, yeah it, it's nice to have a i I, it, I find it nice to have a mouse i actually that's just a stock photo on the image oh, okay. there i have the the platinum cover and the okay. platinum nice uh, yeah, the, the platinum mouse but yeah it, it's it's very cute it it has the same build quality as the um the other surface units and so it has this really great solid uh well-built feel to it and that's that you know and i hope that one of the things that this does is uh that it takes the the pc oems who have been cranking out really mediocre 499 dollar and 399 dollar pcs and it helps them up their game uh, i think that the original surface that that's kind of what it did. Yep. You know, you watched Lenovo, you watched yep. HP, you watched Dell. There, you compare, uh, look at their PCs from 2012 
when the first Surface came out, and then 2015 when the first good Surface came out, the Surface Pro 3. And you, and you look at the evolution of the PC market since then, and I think they have improved dramatically just by, in, in many cases, with some of the uh, manufacturers, just by copying uh, features that Microsoft came out with on the Surface. I have to say that is one thing that uh, you really notice when you're faced, and I, I still prefer Mac OS, but when you're faced with the, the very limited choice you get in the Apple world and the amazing heterogeneity of the PC world, you really, there's nothing you can't get in some form or fashion uh, running Windows. He heterogeneity. Heterogeneity. Sounds there like a go. smart guy like you could help me get a mortgage for my house. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm thinking. Oh, doctor! Smart, smart guy like you with that vocabulary. I just happen. I'm just happen no to be holding in my hands the exact no thing oh. you need, my friend. Didn't, didn't Sounds like somebody you could help. You can help skill. me. <laughs> uh, sales is a skill. I'm on the lower end of it. Now. Aunt, Aunt, can you pass the popcorn, please? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it's time to talk about Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans, the best, the biggest lender in the country, and a very customer-centric uh, uh, business. I mean, that's one of the things I love about Quicken Loans. And we've talked before about Rocket Mortgage, which is their entirely online mortgage approval process. Let me go in a little bit more detail about why Rocket Mortgage is more than just an easy way to apply for a loan. It's the best way to apply for a new home loan. Interest rates are starting to go up, aren't they? That adds a lot of anxiety. And the last thing you want when you're buying the most expensive thing you'll ever buy, even more expensive than an i9 MacBook Pro and an eGPU, you need to get the sense that, okay, I can, I can take my, I need the zen of being able to take my time and choosing the right house, not being rushed into it. That's what Rocket Mortgage is bringing you with something they call the power buying process. It starts, as always with Rocket Mortgage, with this really simple to use Rocket Mortgage website. It's, uh, it's rocketmortgage.com slash twit2. A few in s simple questions. They get everything they need. They have all the relationships with the financial institutions. So once you give them permission, they can go out and get the information they need. And then based on income assets and credit, they will quickly give you approval, but within 24 hours, they'll give you something called verified approval. So you get the pre-qualified approval right away. Within about 10 minutes, 8 minutes, the verified approval within a day, that gives you the strength of a cash buyer. It's basically saying, we, we, will get, we are going to give this person that loan. So when you go in and buy a house, the seller looks at you like a cash buyer. There's no contingency on getting the loan. You got the loan. That's fabulous. Then the next thing happens. It really eliminates the anxiety. You get the rate shield approval. This is a guaranteed rate for up to 90 days. That means you have time to look at all the houses. You have time to, you know, breathe and find the right place, not be rushed into it. If your rate, your rate is locked in. If rates go up, your rate does not move. If rates go down, though, by the way, your rate will drop. So you win either way. You're, you just you just have to have peace of mind there. This is exactly what you'd expect from America's best mortgage lender. Rocketmortgage.com slash twit2 from Quicken Loans. Rocketmortgage.com slash twit2. When it's time to, to buy that new home, this is the one and only way to do it. Great rates, that sense of confidence, and the zen of knowing you're not in a rush. You got Quicken Loans backing you up. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, and MLSConsumeraccess.org number 3030. You don't have to remember all that. Just remember this, rocketmortgage.com slash twit and the number two, rocketmortgage.com slash twit two. We thank uh, Quicken Loans. They've been a big supporter of this network. We appreciate it. The I knew best. you were the right man for the job. The right man to get you into what's it going to take to get you into a new home, Owen J.J. Stone? You to liquefy 22% of your old gadgets so I could sell them on eBay at a high rate so that I could put my down payment and use RocketMortgage.com to get the lowest rates available. You know, Like I said, we're going to negotiate these terms, Uncle Leo. We're going to get this done. I made two mistakes. I shouldn't have shorted Tesla. Oh, I, I love it. The shorts have lost now more than $2 billion. Lost their shorts. <laughs> they lost their shorts. And I and I invested in MoviePass. Maybe that was a mistake. I don't know. Yikes. Uh, 
<laughs> Did, have any of you used Movie Pass? So no. Uh, yeah. I just no, thought it's too okay. good to be true. I'm not going to do it. What about you, Owen? Okay, I saw Owen's so, tweet. It's pretty funny. Man, every everybody <laughs> who follows me on the internet knows that I am the person that destroyed Movie Pass. As soon as they <laughs> you said broke they were it. giving out, as soon as they said it was nine ninety nine a month. I got one for me. It, Leah got her first credit card with her name on it. I got one for Leah. <laughs> I paid twenty dollars a month. Last year alone, I saw seventy three movies oh times my. two. Oh my that God. averaged out to me paying. That averaged out to them paying for seventy nine percent of the movie. Like they they made a dollar sixty six per movie off of me when the movies are fourteen dollars a pop. That that's how many movies I saw this year. I'm on record for fifty four movies times two. Let me tell you how bad I am with these movies. I went to go see like a a, a Jesus movie, a possible movie. I fell asleep in it, didn't care, didn't lose no money. Didn't cost you I, anything. Went and, I went and saw the 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 uh, Gotti movie, which is the 57th Gotti movie. It was horrible. I walked out, didn't give a hoot, and or Annie. I'm seeing three, four movies a week, and I personally, me and my daughter, have destroyed and decimated movie paths. It is people like us that has made this company go bankrupt. I'm super kind of sad, but I got a backup plan. Uh, it's just amazing how dumb they were to think that this was going to work. I, I don't know what the plan was. I was expecting them to raise the rate after three months. They right. did not. And I expect after six months, they did not. Then they did the year up front membership because I was doing month to month. They wanted people to pay 120 a year. And that, that gets more cash influx, which which floated me through Christmas. And now they're just like, what are you doing? You. AMC charges twenty dollars a month and puts a limit on three movies per week. These guys say any movie, anytime. I was watching movies on prime time Friday night. I'm taking movies from paying customers with my daughter falling asleep, so snoring in them. Uh, they ran pass. out of cash last Friday and went offline. What did you do? Did you run out and get the other one, Cinema, or there's others, right? So uh, I live in a non. Um, I don't live in a, a high rate of populace, so. A lot of my movies were grayed out, but I could still see some. And now I can only see each movie at one time during the day. So I guess they're it's gonna, the movie where nobody's going to see it. Boost the price fifty percent, they said. Yeah, I'll, I'll pay twenty bucks a month. Like I said, I don't. I've been stealing hand over fist. I feel like I owe movie pass. <laughs> <laughs> I you, I he's feel like ran him into the ground. He's the man <laughs> who did. broke movie pass. <laughs> I did. I look me. Me and my daughter. We. Oh, it's okay. I'm gonna tell y'all a secret. And movie pass, if you come find me and you want to yell at me or cancel my account, don't matter. Y'all broke now. This is how yeah. dumb and inadequate their system was, okay? My local movie theater had a cheap day on Tuesdays where the tickets were half price. Yeah. Well, I would take Lee and her friends, and I'd be going to Will to pay for their tickets. Yeah. But for some reason, movie pass did not adjust the amount of money <laughs> they were paying to the theater. And I ordered four tickets, and they say, oh, that's five cents. And I'm like, no, man. <laughs> and they said, no, sir, it's going to be five cents. because they're And guess what? Every Tuesday, I said, Liam, bring your friends. For a nickel. Oh, this is gold. When I was a kid, that's how much movies cost, a nickel. And actually, you, Dad would give you a nickel. You'd get the movie and a box of popcorn. And let oh me tell you something. God. Parents out here thinking I'm rich beyond the riches because I'm paying for their kids to go to the movies. <laughs> Not knowing I'm only paying for says, Thank you, Movie Pass. I appreciate you and love you. And I apologize that y'all are broke. I am definitely one of the, I'm a hey. power user. They weren't expecting somebody like me. <laughs> they weren't expecting the Tyrannosaurus Rex to come through. You're, the, you're, thought, you're like the guy who goes to no. the all-you-can-eat buffet and basically wipes it out. I bet you do oh. that, actually. Hey, I've been throwing so. out of buffets before. I'm <laughs> <laughs> now, see, I'm fat. I ain't never been thrown out of no buffet. I've been looked at, oh, I've been, but ain't nobody I've come up to me. Out. You've been thrown oh, out see. for eating too much? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Well, sir, it was such a such price or what have you, and I just keep breaking in. I mean, I, I have a big appetite. I mean, I'm, I'm not that big of a guy, but I have a really big appetite, and That's I would awesome. go to these buffets and just uh. just eat. And then there was a time or two where I, it was a challenge just to see, well, can I get thrown out today? And then, you know, one of me and my best friend, we would go. He's a big meathead, too. So we would just go and wow. just crush it. Wow. Just, just see what could happen.
Golden Corral is one of my favorite ones. <laughs> so so <laughs> Ant broke Golden Corral. You broke Movie Pass. What did you break, Ed Bot, huh? I you know, I wish I knew. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wish wish you had the economic Tesla, power probably. of these guys. Yeah. So he's he, smart. He's not gonna put it out there. He's not trying to set himself up. Speaking for, of economic uh, for power, backlash. Fortnite announced a couple of months ago that they were making hundred fifty million dollars a day, a day on IO iOS. This is for a free game, but there's in-app purchases, and of course that means Apple made fifty million dollars a day because they I, take a third I bet of you it. they don't send. I bet you they won't send out alerts to tell you that you've been on that game for no, sixteen hours no, no. straight and you didn't go to. They school, say, do you want a bed? dance move? It's only five dollars. Yep. That game is horrible. I I feel <laughs> I love it. I I won't, I won't let my daughter play it. No, uh, again, I wouldn't let my daughter play it, but I can't. I can't. Tr again, you got to keep your kids away from crack cocaine. You don't want your kids to do heroin. Crack. Tell them heroin's bad. It is crack. F Fortnite yeah. is a drug. So it's coming to Android, but this is interesting. Uh, Tw Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic, said we're not going to put it in the Play Store. Good for them. Now remember, Apple doesn't let you choose. So Apple, they had to give them their thirty percent. But they say, no, you know what? We want all $150 million. We want it all. Can you blame them? No. So we're going to sideload it. But 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 I, maybe you can blame them for this. Some people have. In order to do that, you have to turn off the feature that protects you on Android that says only download apps in the Play Store. You have to say, uh, and, and they'll give you a big warning. This is not secure. You shouldn't get apps from anywhere but the Play Store. But you can right. sideload it from uh, from the Fortnite website. And that's how you destroy MoviePass on Android phones by not paying them their fair share when you're making all this money hand over fist. Just go through the store and pay the cut. I don't that, like that's that. That's an interesting take. All right. I don't it doesn't like that. change don't, the I, uh, the player's point of view. In fact, in a way, you're taking advantage of people because they're going to make their phone less secure. And how many people are going to turn that back on? And how many people even understand that even that's know. what they're doing yeah, yeah. with their device? And especially because mostly a lot of kids play it. You're setting your kid up to be vulnerable. Mm. To, I don't like that mm. at all. There's I also the like question of all. maybe it will impede the number of people who install Fortnite because I bet you a lot of people don't even know how How do I do that? What do you mean I can't get it at the Play Store? If it's not in the Play Store, it may not exist for a lot of people. And, and what if it's buggy because it's not regulated at all and it's just right. killing your... Uh, uh, all kinds of problems with that. I don't like it. Pineapples. Bet, pineapples. I don't like uh, it. I bet the kids that are playing Fortnite and are know curious how to about do it. getting this on Android, <laughs> yeah. they, they already know how to do all of this stuff. Yeah. They already know how to go in and flip the toggles and whatnot. Yeah. Um, heck, they're probably even running their own VPNs on phones. <laughs> Those kids are. You, you know? You're, give, you're, you're giving kids a lot of credit, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm out, I'm out here. Some pretty sharp. I, I don't know. Maybe it's part of the country I live in. I'm out here coaching, and I'm listening to the kids talk about Fortnite. I, I don't even know if they know their ABCs yet, man. I, I, yeah. I don't know. There's a little <laughs> but, bit of that uh, around here, too. I just I, I want them play. to pay their fair share. That's that's all I'm saying. I, I don't like that. Ed Bott, do you have any opinion? Well, no. I You know, the, the, the 30% racket for all of the online stores is, uh, you know, Sometimes it's justified. Sometimes, like in the case of Amazon, uh, it's it's just a it, it's a it's a blunt force instrument of of competition, and you, you know. So I I understand the argument about building a curated store, but I also saw the service revenues that Apple, Apple reported. In its most recent quarter, and more than ten billion, more than the yeah, Mac and iPad together. Yeah, yeah, they're not they're not hurting they're not hurting there yeah, on that. Yeah. So so I think there's probably if they're making ten billion. How much is everybody else making though? And well, you wouldn't be able point. to make any money if they didn't offer you the, the service and price. So I mean, it's some it's developers a give and take. You, some developers like it because they don't have to worry about distribution at all. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to think about bandwidth. There's no costs. They just put it on the store. Now, some developers don't like the fact that you have to get through the store. The store is quite a gatekeeper. There's a lot of apps you couldn't get on there because Apple is kind of prudish and so forth. In There's general, in, in, in general, the only developers who are making big bucks on any mobile store are those with sticky, addictive like uh, th things yeah. like like games, yep. Ga games and things with uh, with with in-app purchases. Uh, the the 
the companies that have been devastated, the developers that have been devastated are the ones that are making productivity apps where they don't have 30% yeah. to, uh, to give up. And, and they're, they were once able to legitimately charge, you know, 50 bucks for, uh, for an app or or ninety nine dollars for how an much app. Windows uh, Microsoft Office was. I mean, well, yeah, but I mean, we can even go down down from there, you know. But where where in order to pay for the time that the developer takes to uh, to develop that app, to debug it, to test it, to support it, and to upgrade it, you know, uh, and then the the customers are going to say we want it four ninety nine or nine ninety nine. Or we're not going to pay anything over nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine is like the the top of the line. You know that's like considered expensive. And so there's yeah. I, I I have talked to developers who had successful apps who have gone back now. They're just they're working in corporate jobs now, writing uh, at web you know doing yeah. websites and and uh, and line of business apps because they they're their really good productivity app is no longer uh, a thing. It's a very bold move by uh, Epic. I'll be, it, it'll be very interesting to see what the impact is, if it kills Fortnite on Android or if it makes Fortnite sing, if Epic makes more money. I mean, this will be very interesting. And if other people follow suit, it could completely destroy the Play Store. It could, you know, I mean, of course, it's like the PC. You don't, you, you, you could buy in the Windows Store or you can turn off S mode and buy and get stuff everywhere else. And not what's, everybody's what's the full model. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, not everybody's Fortnite. Yeah. So. Yeah, not everybody can do that. Go ahead. What was the question, at? What's the model for people like uh, Atlassian and Jira that have, you know, their their big platforms for corporations and whatnot, but then they also have a mobile app? And I mean, is it that they're just sort of maybe. writing off that mobile app as yeah. just something they have as yeah, an option? Exactly. But we're just banking solely on the platform. Exactly. The mobile app is free. And the subscription is where you make the money. And in fact, these are those are two very good examples because they're freemiums, right? And most people right. who use Slack, for instance, don't pay for Slack. Yeah, Slack ninety-five percent is is typically if you can yeah. get five percent of your users to pay the 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 premium, you can usually make of uh, you can usually make a profit. It's an interesting model. Yeah. Nice. Um, I think we should wrap this up, don't you? I think it's gone on too long. <laughs> 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 this is this is uh this is definitely an episode that uh, i hope you raise my glass to ant over i the other just hope there. you brought your your merlot Cheers. your brown liquor your popcorn owen jj <laughs> stone brought his movie pass <laughs> <laughs> oh after the show i gotta show you something i had leah leah's doing youtube videos and she did a of uh, a movie reaction video, Uncle Leo. You got oh, fun! And and by the way, it's YouTube scary. is where you find this new Ninja Parenting podcast too. What's the channel? Yeah, uh, it's everything's on IQMZ dot uh, com. So if you go there, you'll find it. Uh, like I said, doing a raising the ninja thing because people always ask me how I, I got my kid out here fighting and killing and learning in these streets. And then uh, I also put a thing on IQMZ Tech showing the camera that I use, the software I use. Nice. People always ask. How I get looking so luxurious on your show. Not me, just the stream coming through. I don't look luxurious, but the picture does and the bouquet and all that stuff behind me. So if you go there, you can see a list of everything that I use and I have, and it is awesome. And Very it's in nice. there for you. Very nice. So. IQMZ.com. Aunt Pruitt is it a contributing uh, writer for the fabulous Tech Republic. He's also Aunt underscore Pruitt on Twitter. Anything you want to plug? You're doing those Friday night videos, right? Yeah, had another fun night um, live editing Friday, and uh, that that's 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 the thing. I, I I like for people to go and check out my YouTube channel and just um, hop in and leave a comment on some stuff that you like or dislike, uh, so I know what exactly everybody is wanting from uh, photography and just digital content creation stuff. I, I this is not it. always photography. I also did a live stream for um, editing some uh, video stuff. Uh, nice. I think it was some doing some lower thirds and things like that. And I'm just he's, trying to he's the drone master out. too. Great great <laughs> drone pilot. Uh yeah, I have fun flying my drones. That's nice. I need <laughs> I, I need to come hang out with you and get get my drone game up. You bet. Come I, on down. I, come on down. I, I do fly. I'm a I'm a rogue flyer. I'm not really, you know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I have my drone. Do I have my drone over here? Where am I drone at? 
You find Ant's uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ant Pruitt. That's the smallest, stinkiest. What hey, is that? So, hey, hey, don't worry about what I'm doing. I'm did, that come in, did that come in a cereal box, Owen? What the hell? <laughs> this is a, a Tello. It's, it's there is a drone. drone. That's, a, that's a manly drone. Oh. Okay, but there's first one of all, problem, don't be outside though. of me. I know you got the toys. This, this is Leah's drone, okay? Don't oh, okay, me. that's different. That's this, different. This is Leah's drone. It flies no. itself pretty much, so. Yeah, that's what you need. Because <laughs> Leo, this Leo over here is really good at flying drones into things. The worst. Yeah. Including the Man. Caribbean, last drone. And I'm never buying another drone. That's it. You are Shit. banned, sir. I'm banned. <laughs> banned from drone life. Ed Bot writes regularly. Uh, the Ed Bot Report at uh, ZDNet must read, including a Surface Go review. Uh, lots more. It's fa Wait a minute. How to upgrade from home to pro for free? Wait a minute. How can I do that? Oh, I guess well. I'll have to read the Ed Bot Report. It's been uh, it's been a, it's it's a, a really popular post. I've just updated it. Nice uh, that because I because uh, I got this. You know, I wanted to upgrade to Pro because I want uh, BitLocker on my new Surface Go, and they wanted ninety nine bucks. So yeah, and if you read this article, it will explain to you how you can do it without paying the ninety nine bucks. And I'll bet now it's there's there's no trick in there, but I'll bet you meet the qualifications I'm for sure it. I'll I bet do. you've got. A drawer yes, or I a do. box in your garage <laughs> that has you the product key that yes. you need. Okay. It's in there somewhere. Ed bought at ZDNet. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so glad you were here today. I hope you brought some brown liquor and popcorn because <laughs> this was quite the show. Lagavulin, baby. <laughs> oh, it's the Lagavulin, baby. Lagavulin. Mm. Love it. <laughs> we're talking single malt. That's it, right. Yes, sir. None of these blends for Ant. If you want to watch us uh, do this show, we do it Sunday afternoons, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC. You can watch on the stream, twit.tv slash live. We've got audio and video, number of different purveyors, so you can choose a stream that's right for you. You can also visit us in the studio. We had a great bunch of people in here. From uh, Doylestown, PA, we had Olga and Peter. We had, uh, let's see, and and Aura, too, or Ah. Anna? Aha? Uh -huh. Oh, Aura? Uh... Anyway, I see I see a name I can't read it. John from Modesto, and a nice couple, Jessica and Brian from Sacramento. If you want to be in the studio audience, easy to do. I'll mispronounce your name too. All you have to do is email <laughs> tickets at twit.tv, and it's no charge, but you got to be in the Petaluma area. That's the only catch. Uh, our chat room irc.twit.tv, a great place to be if you're watching live or watching anytime. On-demand ver versions of this show and every show we do are available at our website twit.tv. It's a no BS website. I promise. It loads fast, gets the job done, no cost to you. You can even subscribe in your favorite podcast application. That way you'll get it every, every week. Right before you leave for work on Monday, you can listen to This Week in Tech. Thanks for being here. And we'll see you next time. Another twit. It is amazing. Is in the game. Bye-bye. Doing the twit. Doing the twit. All right.